Hello, welcome to Building the Milton Valley Railroad Continued I say continued because we are continuously building it Yes Not because it's actually just a continuation of the old series which it technically is because it still is the old series Yes, so Switch over here we go. Uh, this is what we built so far, which is really uh, quite impressive considering that it's only a maximum of four hours a week, plus reading chat. So if we look over here, this is where we've been building recently. Just quickly do a little further. The water doesn't reflect at the moment. I've still not put the settings back up after updating to server spec 5. So, yes. But, uh, let's just quickly have a look through. And this is mostly done. I might touch it up here and there with some bushes or some things, maybe at some point. We'll see. I know this isn't uh, doing any fa the the compression isn't doing any favors for this with all this movement, but can't do anything about that. Then it opens up down here with that little siding, which we still have to do the trackside objects off. Goes down through the forest here for the little woodland. Then over to here with all the felled forest. Beautiful valley. And for as much as it's sad that the forest has been cut down here, it does open up the vista to allow these great views, which that's that's a plus, I think. And you've got to imagine it, of course, with a higher render distance when I'm not streaming, with where you actually see the trees in the distance. Okay, so then it comes around here. Don't worry, chat, I'll greet you in a moment. Comes around here. And by the way, the view going looking this way is also just so beautiful, I think. If I increase the render distance a bit. But <laughs> you get the idea. Anyway. Also, if my mouse, my camera movements aren't as smooth as usual, I'm still getting used to the mouse drivers, the new ones. I've been using the old ones for many years, and it takes a while to get used to the new ones. So then this is where the yard lead and run round track start. And then we get into the log loading area, which we built last time, most of this. So this time around, I want to do a little bit of work here, putting in some little, like little sheds, maybe some more bits of wood or people or things like that and then the main bit of what I want to do today is do the terraforming over here and get the bridge in and the portal on the other side and then after that this branch will essentially be done except for some details so I'll read chat hello Mr. W welcome it has been a long time hello hello anyone here Yes. How have you been since I've last spoken with you? Maybe. Hello. Yes, should I, just in case I change my mind about it, will Discord VC be an option for the stream? Uh, yes. Basically. Actually, let me also switch. I've, I'm also, I'm already in the voice call, should you wish to join. But I need to switch over the mul to the multi-output device, so that it will pick up your voice. Sure. Hey-ho, ho-ho. Mm-hmm. Ho. <laughs> yes. Roll out the blue carpets. Mr. W has to return to chat. <laughs> oh, you. You're too kind. There we go. Third time lucky. Mm hmm. Lucky. L loving how it looks. Thank you very much. It took a while to build. Same, I especially like the shrubland with the tree stumps. Well, sad, it does make for quite the change in scenery. Hello, VGR. Welcome. By the way, change stream topic. Oh, good point. Haha. <laughs> I updated the name, but not the topic, apparently. See, that's why I've got a chat. <laughs> eh? Hey, stream title. Yes, there we go. Still the tabletop. Mm hmm. Yep. My god, I've missed this. Aw. With you in chat, it's just like the old times. Mm hmm. Only we've built a bit more since then. <laughs> okay, so. What's the first thing I want to do? First thing I want to do is doing a little bit more detailing around here, like I said previously. 
So what I would like first of all is just a few logs laying around the place, just a couple of them. My man's out there, Nato busting a lot of caps. Ah, I, I don't exactly know who you mean, but sure. Okay, so what do I? Okay, let's look for. Actually, let's look for timber. There might be a little some good timber assets. If not, then I'll look for log. Ah yes, timber bridges, timber station. Ah, uh, <laughs> timber stack. And yes, it, scrolling also is affected by the driver. Oops, gotta switch the layers. I still keep forgetting about to do that. I've been forgetting that since I started this series, and I keep forgetting it almost every time. Um. Oh, I see. That seems worrying. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Okay, so, ah, this might be... Yeah, this is, is useful, maybe just to lay around some place. Just a few wooden bars. Bars? Poles. Beam. Beams! That's the word. So, I think maybe having some of them over here, maybe a little bit in the bushes. Maybe they were put here because they wanted to be used for something, but then maybe they, that project got delayed and now there's a bush growing on it. <laughs> oh, just training. Well, that's a relief. Okay, now let's look for log. Okay, that all looks okay, like I just said. I don't want to spend a lot of time doing that. Actually, maybe uh, some of these sheds could maybe look nice over here. No, that looks too... Uh, too towny, but that... Actually, that looks pretty good. If I move or delete this stump and move this over here, like that, I think that's fit. That fits really nicely. <laughs> Just trains on it. <laughs> You've probably seen it, but I put the 800 jump from Star Citizen into deported. Yes, I've seen it. Looks impressive. Is there some sort of wood scrap or something like that? I mean, there's this, which I suppose maybe I could... Eh, I don't know. Actually, that reminds me to lower this a little bit, because there is a little bit of an incline. Maybe that could work. Just kind of laying around over here. Ha 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 ha. Well, if, I mean, characters, if, if you know the height of a character, I suppose it would make sense to use that as a reference. Okay, I, I think that's enough detail for the moment. And about the people, I want to put the people in, in the sessions, I've decided. So, two meters, isn't it? Yeah, that's why I did. Uh, roundabouts. Hmm. Okay, so now let's get to the actual big fun bit, which is terraforming this area. So my plan is, I'm probably going to bring this river in a bit closer. This is only temporary down there. Divided forty meters. Oh, ah, there's a voice. Hello. <laughs> a voice. A voice has joined me. I'm. Hello. I'm starting to hear things. Oh no. <laughs> Hello. Welcome! Yeah, Hello. so... Like, how long has it been? I'm not outside of the uh, pathos streams, I mean. I'm gonna go like six months or something? Ah, that is... That, yeah, that seems like it. 
Yeah, I've just been like, it's not been a difficult time as such. I've just been quite tired for quite a lot of it. Ah. Uh-huh. <laughs> but this time I thought, you know, my laptop was on in any case, so I thought I'd join. Yeah, I'm glad you did. So, thank you, and I've been meaning to come back to it for for a while, um, for a couple of weeks. Yeah, it's it's good to be back. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm extending the baseboards so that I can then put the hills in. So the plan for this area is I want to have the river come a little bit closer. Then I want the line, which is this track, to have a large suspended bridge over the little canyon and then vanish into a portal. Just give me one second, mate. Sure. Uh, The line to vanish into a portal over on this side. And then, well, that's where the line ends, on the route. Now, in-universe, that route continues, because, of course, it has to go somewhere else and where the trains can come from. But here it'll end there. Um, I'm not... I can't really listen to that at the moment. Sorry. Uh... Trends Live, 87? 80, 80, wait, this is... Wait, which, which... What number stream is this currently? Is this... Isn't... Uh, it's 184... Something? Something like that? I'll have a look. Welcome back. Hey, you. <laughs> Kango says that it's... That the last time you were on stream with trains... It was on building build, the building stream number 87, and this is stream number 185. Good grief. Yeah, this sort of stuff takes a lot of time, especially if you yeah, only I do could... four weeks, uh, four hours per week. I was going to say, you're still building the Milton Valley Railway. <laughs> yeah. Well, road, railroad, rather. <laughs> Can I ask, being, I assume that you're going to um, raise the land, so why are you, like, are you, are you, like, cleaning it up first and then going to raise it? Yes, I'm painting over the other texture first, because after updating trains, it defaults to putting a grass texture down instead of the grid. You can still get the grid, but <sighs> it is default. And now I'm going to raise it, and I'm actually going to raise it with the copy and paste tool, because that is quicker. Mm. So I've just copied a whole bunch of the raised flatland, and I'm just going to click over it to raise it. Welcome to the chat, Can Gaming. Can Gaming, hello. Yes, welcome. Have you picked up any um, any new people since I've been gone? New people? Yes. There have been quite a few. Some of them are regulars, others pop by occasionally. <laughs> Hello, Kang Bango. I haven't updated to the latest TRS-19. <laughs> I was on TRS-19 Service Pack 2 for years, and I literally only updated like a couple weeks ago. <laughs> what does the update do exactly? Uh, lots of stuff. It There are some quality of, nice, uh, blah, blah, quality of life changes. There's uh, UI improvements. Uh, bug fixes. Uh, it changes around some bits. Honestly, if you want to know what it does, you're better off asking on Discord. Either on the official trains Discord or on my Discord. Because I'm not entirely sure about all the stuff that it changes. <laughs> Hello, Code Monkey. Ru- ruins your muscle memory is what I've heard so far. <laughs> yeah. Keyboard shortcuts have changed, some of them. At least on Mac. But I quite like it so far. Mm Mm-hmm. Good, good. So, Mr. W, what have you been up to today? (laughs) Well, I've been on the... (laughs) Well, I think we've both been up to the same thing. Um... In, in in our per, in our personal 
you know, in our in our personal world, I think. Um, other than that, I've had my guitar tutor, uh, as is, the, you know, as I normally do every Saturday. Aside from that, it's just sort of been, um, it's just, just sort of been relaxing because I've got a, a quite a full day tomorrow. Uh huh. Interesting. Yes. And I know, for anyone watching, no, I haven't forgotten that I still need to change the grid size to five meters. I'm gonna do that before. Well, I'm gonna do that before I do the texturing, but after I do the terraforming, because if I do it with 10 meters, it's less lag. Also, how do I want this to continue? Probably just come around here and then around a corner or something like that. Don't look at me. I can't, you don't have your face cam on. No. <laughs> yeah. Is that good? No, it, I need to make this curve a little bit more so that the edge isn't visible. No, I don't mean the one in the town, next town over. I've seen um, Eliza talking about the pathos. Mm -hmm. I see he's, he's, joined, he's met you on your um, uh, STA streams. Ah, well, uh, Eliza, well, slash VGR, but Eliza has been sort of informally part of the crew in chat, not, not controlling an NPC in the game directly, but mm -hmm. kind of interacting in chat through that. Uh -huh. It's been quite nice, it's interesting, because, he's, because Eliza is one of the one of the characters that he's made for, for for his other things from inspired by another franchise, I believe. VGR, I please say, correct yeah, me. I, I was gonna say, yeah, I remember um, I remember him talking about that. Talking mm -hmm. about Eliza. Yeah. For a dimensional yes. <laughs> Aren't we all? So yes. Kango says, um, what about the at the infamous Trekkers character? Oh, him. Uh-huh. <laughs> and Kango asks, what was his name again? Uh, Kwithran. <laughs> Kithran, it was. Well, Kango's right then in saying not to... De yeah, Bethar. <laughs> Bethar. <laughs> uh. He's not here right now. Never. No, he's not. Well, since, um, it all well, happened quite a while ago. Um... People have said that I should really try and um, oh, I should really try and um, get rid of well, not get rid of, but try and what's the word? Reduce my lisp. Uh, so I'm actively trying to say uh, you know th instead of th when I can. But because of that, I've made I've made the lisp and the th more pronounced. And sometimes I say th when it should be f. Huh. Well, I've never had an issue with the way you speak. It's just the way that you speak. <clears throat> yeah, I think I think it's um because I sometimes because I sometimes sing and stuff. I think I think it's the singing. Ah, yes, the singing okay. that would make sense. Yes. Um, VGR says that Eliza says I am Schrodinger's tall girl. I am both there and not there at the same time. <laughs> yes, that is essentially a very accurate description of Eliza's current state in Pathos. <laughs> uh, Kangra says, all right, and Vidya says that Eliza says, you can tell me from the path Pathos thanks to my large, I don't know, soas yacht with a lot of, with a lot of gun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Kango Fango says that Kango says, ah, right. <laughs> you could be getting into some serious meta stuff at the moment. Don't do this to me. So, I'm getting quite a lot done with the terrain terraforming currently. Yeah, it, it looks like it. And that's that's good. Now I'll update the grid size. There we go. It just ever so slightly phases out of existence when I update it, and then it comes back. But that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I've just had a look at your schedule. Um, and I think the ones I'll be able to come to will you know, probably be this one and potentially the Monday ones as well. Ooh, interesting. 
Yeah. Um, I say that because I don't, um, I don't have any, anything, well, not, I don't have anything that I have to go to on Tuesdays, but sometimes, you know, sometimes I choose to do it, and so I need to go to bed at a fairly decent time just so I'm up and awake. Um, same for this, really, if you go on, how long do you tend to go on for this? Uh, it's two hours. Two hours, so that's... But you don't, if, if you're coming, you don't have to stay for all of it, of course, or for yeah, any of it. Right. I was I was gonna say I might shoot off at like ten forty or something, or, uh, not ten forty, ten thirty or something. But we'll, we'll see. We'll yeah, see. whatever you're comfortable with. Um, VGR says and rap music in the background or the DKO Krieg inspection team. Hmm. Interesting. Right. Krieg. And Eliza says, yeah. Go on. Krieg is the German word for war, by the way. Oh. Um, and Eliza says, from Warhammer 40k. Hmm. I'm not really familiar with Warhammer 40k. The only stuff that I know about the universe is stuff that I've uh, heard about from my friends who are familiar with it. Yeah, yeah I've, not, I've not played it either, but I do actually have a game of it, as in like a video, as in like a video game of it. I think I got it in a Poundland, actually. Hmm. Okay, I suppose it's time to put the bridge in now, before I do any more detail on the actual uh, geometry of the terrain. Does it sound like you're dreading that? Well, it's okay. It just means that I might have to change the height of it, depending on if I can fit a, find a bridge that fits. Oh, uh, yeah. So yes, about Monday. Human for Flat will probably happen on the 9th. But this is yet to be confirmed, Mr. W, says mm. Kanga Fango. <laughs> well, 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 I'll, well, I'll, well, I'll join in it. I'll join in any case, whether it's human floor flat, well, human floor flat or not. Well, I'll, I'll try to at least. I'm, I'm just gonna get myself a mouse. I'll be back in a bit. Ah, has it been annoying you lately? Yes. I say that because I can't, because I use a, um... Has it been scurrying like, around? Yes. I always have to try I always have to, I, I always have to put him back into his, um... Into the, into the laptop um, compartment. Yeah, I say that because, um... It doesn't let me, um... Scroll if I'm holding down... Not scroll. It doesn't let me, um... Because I use... It's not called this, but a like built-in mouse, you know, the little pad that you have. Uh, trackpad. Uh, if, that, if that's what it's called, so be it. But it doesn't let me um, move the mouse if I'm holding down a button. And so with the button I've got with push to talk, I can only move the mouse. Huh. Um, what did I put it on for? Oh, I remember what I put it on for. It was gonna, I was going to turn on the stream just for a bit and then listen to how I sound, because I've not heard myself in anything like that for a while. So I, will, I will read chat first. Uh, Kanga says, "All right." Um, Eliza says, "That theme, that theme, well, that fits perfectly in my opinion. Given that the R A N Beus Febs Kumata has enough weaponry to level half of London, hypothetically speaking." And Kanga says, "Ah, catching mice again, are we?" <laughs> yeah, it's not rats this time. You've upgraded. <sighs> <laughs> For context, it's a thing that one of his roleplay characters did. No, they don't need context. No, don't, no, don't embarrass me. I'm not gonna. No, no, no. <laughs> just to lessen it, just so there's a bit of understanding. Yeah, that's fair enough. Because if I just say that, <laughs> then people might think I meant you. Yeah, it which... makes it sound like I've been. Counting. Yeah, so that's why I wanted to provide a little bit of context. Uh, Eliza says, aren't rats and mice the same thing? They're eating grain, they're annoying. Mm. I mean, yeah, see, that's true. What, what is the difference between a mouse and a rat? Well, they're different species. They're both... Oh, are they really? Yeah. I mean, rats, there are different species of rats and different species of mice. It's just a different animal. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, Kango says, uh, like, tribbles? Wait, no. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to get you some tribbles in Star Trek Pathos. 
at some point. What? Um. Um. You know how one of our, you know, one of the guys in our, in our personal role play thing, has a pet. What's the pet called again? Is that a trivial or is that? It's a... not a. Uh... Fire warden. Fire warden is a sailot. That was what it was. It's a big Vulcan. Well, from Vulcan, it's a big bear cat thing with six uh, six inch fangs. The kangaroo says like dogs slash bitches and foxes, and a bitch is a female name for a dog, so don't come at me for that. Uh, I won't. Kangaroo has now spe- now can kangaroo has spelled out sailot. Yes. Sailot. Yeah, sailot, sailot. It. It's pronounced differently in the different episodes, yeah. I think. Vulcan Sabretooth Bearcat is what the family is. Mm-hmm. So what kind of stuff have you been streaming on um, on the MISC day? Well, if you want a complete list, there's a playlist on my YouTube channel. Totally not a plug. Um, but... <laughs> well, Very good. Very well handled. No, it, it's been... I've been streaming multiplayer Euro Truck Simulator with Kango and some other friends from Discord. We've been playing mini games where one of the players is, for example, running away and the others have to chase him down without using the map, but only knowing where they're going to and things like that. And um, okay. Human for Flat, of course. Yes. Are you uh, still doing KSP or not so much? Ah, well, <laughs> I hadn't done it since... A a little bit less than a year ago, but last Monday I resumed the series. I did another part, Yay. and I had totally forgotten how many so many of the parts work, which means the entire thing was basically <laughs> to just me trying to get this really quite simple thing into orbit, and it's just not working because I need to get back into the swing of things. Only in a space context can you call getting something into orbit simple. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in uh, in compared to compared to the other things that you can do in KSP. Yeah, that's true. Um, Eliza has put a link to something. I believe it's a meme of some form. Mm. Um, Eliza says, "Sorry, but I had to do it to do him." Uh, Kango says, "And it'll happen again tomorrow." I assume referring to the um, uh, to the um, chasing ah. train. Yeah, thing. because tomorrow. I'm going to be the one who's going to be running away. I only did it once before, and I actually won that time. It was... Uh, I'm going to... Quick aside here. In We were doing it in American Truck Simulator, so you drive around trucks in a version of America. It's not one-to-one scale, but the distances are quite large. And the way the rules of the game is, one runner, me, in that game... And I've got a cargo, and I've got to deliver it to a specific city, but I've got to go twice the minimal length. Or, like, the the shortest duration, the the shortest length, I've got to go twice that. And in that time, the other players have to coordinate to find out where I am, and then all of them have to overtake my truck, and they win. If I deliver my cargo before they can do that, then I win. Yeah? That sounds like a lot of fun. It is. And there were some so many close calls because the way we play, we've only got our mini-map on the very, very zoomed in. So you can basically only see something that's right in front of you. And for the chasers, as soon as they see another name, whether it's me or whether it's another chaser, they've got to turn off the map completely so that I can get away if I, if I can manage that. And there was a play. There was a, a moment where because I've I've also got to obey the traffic laws, like I can't break the speed limit, but they can. They can just drive however they want. Yeah. Oh well, that's that sounds like such a tense experience. It it is. It was so tense. And then there was like this one point where I was driving along the road, and then I saw, oh, there's a name coming up behind me, it's, and it's he was, one of them. yeah, and he was talking in voice chat. He hadn't seen me yet. On, on the map or anywhere, but I knew it was there. Which is a caveat, because if I'm being chased, then I can break the speed limit. So I knew he was there, I knew I was being chased, even though he hadn't seen me, and so I decided to just turn off, 
And he must have missed me by inches, and he just happened to not turn off. And there were so many instances. And then I got, it was, it turned night, and I was on the highway, highway by Las Vegas. And knowing the map, I looked at the screenshot, I knew, okay, the guy just said he's, he's over in by, by that other f- town, by the other city. That's where I'm going. I can't turn off. I, like, I can't avoid this. I was thinking, okay, can I maybe stop? I know he's coming towards me. I literally cannot avoid this interaction. And then he's going to tell everybody else on voice chat where I am. And so at that point I decided, okay, I've just got to get to my destination, which was uh, Los Angeles. I've just got to get there as quick as possible. And so I was talking about like, oh, do you know where I am? Do you, no, no, where could I be? Fully knowing that he's about to find me. And then that moment when he spotted me coming the other way and I just flashed my lights at him. <laughs> uh, that was so funny. And then we got into Los Angeles. And Kango was playing in this as well. And we got to Los Angeles. And at the, by this point, all except for Kango, I believe, had already caught me. So Kango was the last one and he was on his way. And I got into Los Angeles following my nav, my, my GPS, and the GPS was telling me to go that way. So I go, went that way. No, that no, that that's leading me out of Los Angeles. What, what's this doing? And then I realized I had set a waypoint that I hadn't reached, and so it was directing me to the waypoint, not where I need to deliver the cargo to. But because I can't look on the map, because then I would see where the other players are. I couldn't get rid of the waypoint. So I had to manually try to find my way around Los Angeles, finding to find where I need to deliver the cargo to, while there were like four or five other trucks just constantly swarming around me, just blocking me and trying to... (laughs) It was just utter chaos. And then I saw on the minimap Kango approaching on the highway, turning off into Los Angeles, and I found where I need to go, and one guy didn't understand the rules properly. He thought he had to crash into me to win, which wasn't the rule, but that's fine. So he kept crashing into me, meaning I had to, okay, I'm now on the sidewalk. I got to reverse, go back on the road. Okay, now no, he's, okay, now I've got to avoid him. And I managed to deliver that cargo literally like three or four seconds before Kango would have caught me. That was... So I, tense. I don't think I could. Oh, I, I think I think I've talked about it before to you. I don't deal well with stress. I mean, it's it's why I don't. It's why I don't play a lot of horror games. Mm. That would be. Oh no. <laughs> that would be uh, right. Chat is built up a bit. Uh, so do you yes. want to read it? Uh, I can read it. It's fine. I don't. I don't mind. You can keep building. I don't. I honestly uh, don't mind. It's, it's oh. what I used to do before I came in. Well, not before. <laughs> when I was last here. I don't mind at all. Okay. Well, if you're offering, thank you. Make no worries. Uh, Kango says, "Last Monday, Sharadice, Sharadice learned things, and he learned and learned things, and he burned things." <laughs> in KSP, um, yes. In, Eliza laughs at that, and she says, oh, "Cool." And she says, "Better not be California." Uh, Kango says, I'm "Pretty sure ATS and uh, ETS two have a scale of one has a, have a map scale of one to one to ten. Uh, Eliza says, I swear, if I'm forced to go to California one more time, I'll send all the nukes I can to blow it up. Oh, dear. Hmm. Uh, Kango, Kango says, we've had a lot of close calls in those mini games. It sounds like it. Uh-huh. Kango says, yes. Kango, Kango says, yes. I was the last one. Um, Kango says, trust me, American Truck Simulator is far from a horror game. Yeah, I don't doubt that, but, you know, the, the tension on it would just... oh. Um, actually, in a kind of similar vein, uh, I think I... How, like a couple of months ago, I talked to the people in our uh, in our personal um, roleplay server, and um, I asked about good third person, um, like more more tension based horror games. If you remember that mm-hmm. a while ago, and I think someone mentioned um, Resident Evil. So I, was, so I was like, yeah, okay. A um, <clears throat> couple of, well, quite right, well, quite recently now, I had a look. Um, my cousin was kind enough to give me, uh, like a box of, um, like a box of PS2 games, 
um, not in their cases. They were just they were just the discs. So I thought, yeah, I'll have a look through and see if there's anything there. And I and I see Resident Evil Four. Now, the fact that I have a horror game, and it'll just give me like a chance to give it a go and see what it's like. It's it's, it's going to be fun. But I think I'd like a friend over to like watch my reaction to it because. If I'm as if I'm as um, scared by tension and horror and jump scares as I think I am, that's going to be one heck of a watch. <laughs> I mean, more enterprising individuals would say, "Huh, I should live stream that and put it on the yeah. internet forever." Yeah, that's tr- that, yeah, that's that's true. Uh, I'm not yeah. saying you should do that. I'm just but saying some people cer- might. Certain other individuals, yeah. Um, Okay, so uh, Eliza says it's not a horror game, but a spooky game, and then also adds a doot. Um, Kango asks, really? Uh, Eliza says Resident Evil Village is the most accurate representation of, of Romania. I've seen a couple clips from that, and it does it does look like a really good game. Um, v- VGR says just so just so you know, in Resident Evil Four, silence is your friend. I guess that makes sense because um, horror and stealth go hand in hand with the tension of it. Um, Vijay says music means danger. Well, in that case, I am sodded. Uh, and Kanko says, "All right, to uh, Mr. to me, Mr. W." I don't think he means it's dangerous if you play music. I think he means it's dangerous if you hear music. <laughs> if you hear music in the specific, um, yeah, because I've got a couple. I've got a couple stealth games, like I've got um, Dishonored. Is the main one? Do I have any? Actually, I say I say I've got a few. Do I have any others? I don't. I don't think I've got. Any, I don't think I've got any that are mainly stealth ones. I I will have a quick look. Just give me a sec. Yes, music equals danger. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, if I <laughs> if I had a game, if I made a game where music cues played to certain things like so if you're at a shop for example there's a certain kind of music oh it's all safe and happy or if you're i don't know in a fog in some fog or depending on what the game is maybe if it's space like a nebula or something then there's a certain kind of ooh spooky mystery music things like that then (laughs) i would be so tempted to just put in some quite tense music that just plays like ran it has a chance of playing like maybe every 10 minutes but a really really low chance so that you're just doing stuff in the game and at one point you just hear this tense music and from the other piece of music you are trained to believe that the music is connected to in-game events but actually, no. This particular particular piece of music just plays randomly, just to keep you on edge. Yeah, uh, I think because I watched like a video that analysed um, how, how FNAF did that, the first FNAF game, and um, and it said like it sort of sort of gives you um, what's it called? It gives you um, like cues that aren't cues like things that sound like cues and things that sound like they mean something are just random noise and again i suppose it is that tension of you don't know whether or not what you're hearing uh, and especially because it's a lack of information you've got a lack of information anyway um you don't know whether what you're hearing is something that you need to take focus on or something that you need to ignore so you can focus on the stuff that is actually important Mm, I see. Um, yeah, I had a look at the stealth games I've got. I mean, I've got Far Cry 4, which does have a, a decent stealth element. Um, and I've also got some of the Hitman games, um, which I've not played in a while, actually. Uh, anyway, to chat. Um, yeah, so Eliza says, yes, music equals, dan- music equals danger, especially the no- Novista doors. Um, Kango uses jukebox on mailbox. Uh, I don't think that would work. <laughs> that makes that makes it sound like a um, like an old point and click adventure game. Um, Eliza says, "Oh, don't get me started on those effing bugs." Assumedly in Resident Evil Four, so in that case, I'm in for a heck of a time. Uh, Kango says, "All right, Sheridan, sounds like a good idea." 
Hmm. Can't remember what that was. About the music. To. Oh yes, yes. Um, how was your? Because I remember you talking to me about how you were going to make a a horror, well, horror game, quote unquote, based around a lighthouse. Ah. Was it? Yeah. Well, yeah. I did make a, the prototype. Things are going well with it, but I've not worked on it in a long time. I've it's it's on my pile of prototypes that if I get the chance I can look at that and actually finish one of them when I get to it. At the moment I'm focusing on other things. But it's definitely still on that pile. I I do intend to actually make it into a full game one day but not currently. Good, good. Because I remember when you explained the concept to me, I thought that it would, was really interesting. <laughs> Thank um, you. Kango says to me, Ah, was that Scruffy's video, Black and White Stylized Animation? Yes, it indeed was. It's a, it's a really good video in it. Um, Kango says, I saw his two FNAF sound design analysis videos too. Quite interesting. Yes, I do agree with that. Uh, Eliza says, Ambience 1, no one is moving. Ambience 2, animatronics are active. Ambience 3, animatronics are coming. Uh, Kango says, "Ah, oh, right. I think I've heard that too." Uh, to uh, VGR, Eliza has linked a clip of all the sound <coughs> of all the sounds in uh, in in FNAF One. And Kango, I assume to his last thing, says, "No joke intended." I assume to the ambience and the thing about hearing stuff. <laughs> Speaking of games that I've really been into recently, it's I tend to do this. I I tend to know about games, but I don't tend to play them. Like for example, I know quite a bit about FNAF, but I don't think I'd ever play it. Um, have you like watched or played the recent Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe? No, I I know nothing about it. God, I mean the original game anyway is genius. But this one, it, oh, it's it's oh, it's just a it's just a mishmash of it's oh, it's just wonderful. It oh, it's so hard to describe. I can tell. <laughs> yes, um, if you want, I can. I'll, I'll see if I can put it in your Discord. Uh, a link to basically um, including some. Uh, stuff that was already in the game of a, a link to all the new content stuff and mm. it's genu it's genuinely well like, i don't i don't know if i'm going to uh buy slash play it myself yet so i mm. don't if i do then i don't want to have things spoiled yet yeah of course it it, it does uh, to me at least it does like it kind of i mean that's the problem i have with like mostly narrative based games although that said i have been trying to get into story based games um for a bit and it's basically that it's the kind of thing that you'd watch somebody else play, but you yourself wouldn't play because it's not very good on the like. Once you've done everything, you've done everything. Right? So you mean they don't narrative narrative based games don't have that much re replayability? You mean? Well, it's not. It's not that. It's just that. Well, I, yeah, but it can take. But if it's got like multiple choices, then it can take a while for you to um, do for you to for you know for you to do everything but once you have done everything you know you've done everything there's no more to do but i also think it's a thing that you know it's a lack of gameplay it's usually just pick an option and click hmm. you know unlike in tabletop role playing games yes where you mostly get angry at the dm <laughs> what really when have yeah. i made you angry during the DM, a game or the, <laughs> or the dm gets angry at you usually yeah. Not in my games, usually. Yeah. <clears throat> Kangafango <laughs> has written something to you about the mini-games as well. Has he? Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, there it is. Uh, I'll get to that when I release the rest of the chat. Um, Eliza says, ah, yes, the funny game. I assume it'll be referring to the stand now. Mm -hmm. um, Kango says, I've not got it, but I've seen that, that it released. <laughs> the reply button was in the way there. Uh, Kango says, that is great to hear, and he's definitely played the first one. Um, Kango says, 
Also, there's another ATS slash ETS2 minigame where players need to blend into the AI, oh, imitating its near perfect and law abiding driving. And there's one player who doesn't abide by the laws and has to sift the players out of the traffic vehicle. When they find one, they join the trace chaser team and they're to help them track down the others. Oh, that sounds so good. Again, the tension <laughs> there. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, Eliza says, roll in 19 constantly. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, so this is the shape that I want the river to take. I'm of course going to extend the valley a little bit further that way, just so you can see the valley and you don't just see the edge of the world there. Yeah, I was going to say, it goes into, into the void now. Yeah, although there is, you'd expect there to be a waterfall here, only this is where the river comes yeah. from, not goes to... Uh, don't forget the meme. I don't know what you mean by yeah, that. A link, of, a link mm. of some form, which I assume will be checked out afterwards. Um, uh, oh, it links to... Not a, not a five, no, no, no. Five Nights at Freddy's to Hallway Ambience, one hour. Yeah, I, I've, seen, I've seen those guys. I've seen them. Hmm. Yeah. Um, do people like um, Slovak still drop by? Yes, occasionally. Um, he's actually one of the players in the mini games. He's one of the. Oh. He's he's actually the one who comes up with most of them. <laughs> <laughs> Which means that he and his other friend Brandt are really, really good at them. Oh, so, gosh. like for the the one where you've got to hide in the AI traffic, mim to mi mimic yeah. them. They know exactly what sorts of trucks with trailers <laughs> spawn in the AI and which don't. They know exactly when the AI breaks and accelerates, when the lights come on, when they indicate, when they blow the horn and when they don't. Oh, if they get God. close to you, they will find you. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> which also means if you're playing against them, it's almost impossible to tell them apart from the AI. <laughs> Oh, that sounds so good. <laughs> uh, the spook. The spook? It's not Halloween yes. yet. No, no, yeah, another... Hang on. Oh, yes! Yeah. I, re I remember, the first time I've ever played one of these minigames, it was with that one, and this one time. I had to blend into the traffic, it was night, and I came to a train crossing. And the chasers came right up next to me. Shower dice clipped it. I am just going to quickly check that out. Go ahead. For some reason, the sound's not playing on it. Um, hmm. I've, I've opened it in a new tab, so it should... It might be muted on the player. Oh, oh right. Oh. Yeah, unmuted on Twitch, he says. I'll try... What, you mean on this? On, on this one, or...? Well, when you open it up, it defaults to being muted on the actual player. So if... so... You might need to unmute it on the player, in the browser. How do you, 
How do you mean on the player? Well, if you mouse over the video, same with my stream, there's a button where it says pause and the next to it there's a little volume icon. When you open up yeah, a new yeah. thing, it, it defaults to being muted there, so you need to click on that little volume icon to unmute it. It's not for, it's not for me, it opened without being unmuted and I tried clicking on it and it's, I mean, it's loading up at the moment, but... Hmm. There we go. Oh my god. What? It it's just like you like you're passing you're passing them and it's like, oh no, that's just AI, that's just AI. Good god. <laughs> wow. Uh yeah, Kanga says, unmuted on Twitch. Yes, all right, I've done that. Uh, it defaults to being muted most of the time. Um, only because I wasn't that familiar with the AI traffic's behavior. I only lost that game because I forgot to switch on my hazard lights when I stopped in front of the other player, and that's how I was found out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that game being in chat for it. Now, yes, I am taking a bit of a different, different approach. I'm trying to see if maybe in this area it's a little bit easier if I paint the forest on first and then copy and paste the trees on later, because usually I do it the other way around, but this might work as well. I'm really? just going to try it out. Am I happy with that tree line? Not quite. No, Not quite. It should go over like that a little bit more. Come over like this and then join up down there, I think. I think that would look better. From down here, at least. Mm -hmm. Yes, I much prefer that. At least for this top bit, maybe I can have trees coming down here. So something like Are that. Hmm? I, I assume you're you're not still doing the um, roller coaster tycoon, right? No, that has finished a long time ago. Although I do occasionally do planet coaster, but I haven't done that in a while either. Why do you ask? Well, no, because I, I really enjoyed the roller coaster tycoon ones. I think they were one um, they were one of my favorites. Huh. Um, I'm, try I'm trying to think of other stuff to talk about. Um, so how about the weather? It's been nice and warm. <laughs> it's been uh, it's warm, yes. Nice, I, 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 yeah. <laughs> I really quite like it. I don't. Oh, I mean, I don't mind. I, I don't mind. Well, well, no. I, I say that I do mind it because you know it, it, it's just it, it's just horrible and sweaty and it's just. Ugh. I'm gonna sound like such a grumpy guy. I'm <laughs> so grumpy. But yeah, I, I think I might prefer. Well, I don't prefer cold weather, but but the thing with the cold weather is you can is you can put stuff on. Whereas if it's boiling hot, you can only take off a certain amount. Like you can't exactly take off your skin. Well, you technically could, but let's not discuss that. <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> VGR and Eliza are a bit surprised by your exactly. weather preference. Yes, yes. And I think I also hate sweating as well. Well, I say hate sweating, I think most people do. Yeah, it's just... 
Ugh, like for the last couple of days, because um, my room is up decently high uh, in my in my house, it's genuinely felt like the heating's been on. Like the um, ah. like the yeah, like the radiator's been on it. So. Yeah, because of course heat rises because it has a lower density, yes. and so it gets and pushed up. And I'm a little bit closer to the sun. Yes. Well, during the day anyway. Ah, Kango's posted another big one. Yes. Do you want me to read it? Sure, if you want to. Yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, uh, VGR says, It's the stare. Uh, and Kango says, when, <laughs> when Bandit and Slovak said that it's just AI, I was so happy. I thought that I'd actually managed to get away. And when Swedar then mentioned that the AI would have had hazards on, and Bandit confirmed it, I was like, Wait, wait, what? Oh no, so I did miss something. <laughs> Uh, we should play that game again. Uh, so can go handing them there. Mm-hmm. But this Sunday, tomorrow, is going to be the second time that I'm going to be the runner in the previous one that I described, where we where I've got to deliver the cargo and the others have got to find me. And we're going to be playing in Italy because the Italy DLC was actually gifted to me oh. by them because so that we can play multiplayer in that. I should. I mean, I mean, as I said, I've got a bit of a long day tomorrow, and I'm not entirely sure when it's going to finish. But being as Kango's one had, being as Kango's stream finishes at no starts at eight, which I had to work out because I'm used to doing a um, like um, what's it called a twelve hour rather than a twenty four hour. I had to work this out, and it took me an embarrassing long time. Um, I should be able to. Um, to do that. So. Kango's truck streams might... I don't know. It might be a bit earlier than that because some of the players' availability might be different. The last couple of times it's been earlier, but I don't know what it'll be like this time. Oh, there we go. Kango's put it in the thing. Um, it's usually starts at um, 8. That's converting it to a 12. Uh, but this time the stream's available 6. That I might not be able to come to. Uh, but, you know, we'll see, because I'm starting it at 11.30, but who knows how long it's going to be, because we're actually recording something. Ooh. Yeah. Interesting. One might say that we are currently recording something. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Um, is this time stream going to be from... Yeah, so it's six. So I, in that case, I will just set an alarm for that, and I will let you know if I'm able to make it. <laughs> uh, I really like this little bit of forest there, just over by the bridge, because, I don't know, there's just something about that little patch of forest surrounded by grass on that slope. It might be because there's quite a bit of woodland that actually looks quite similar to this near where I live. Um, oh, yeah. With those steep slopes. <laughs> that. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Uh, Vig uh, Eliza says le, le, le sip of coffee. Hmm. The discussion on the Koi server is getting heating. Be right back. Be in a bit, mate. Okay. And Kango says, "All right, thanks, Mr. W. Also, both me and Shadice will be streaming it tomorrow. That is what I plan to come to." <laughs> Good. I'll also see if I can be there on the Monday. Remind me, what are you doing this Monday? This Monday we are planning to do Human Fall Flat with Emmy Chu. Oh, um, so long since I've seen any of that. <laughs> yeah, that should be a lot of fun. The, I would do more of that, but the thing is, <laughs> there just aren't any levels that come. I know we could do workshop levels, but then I... It's it's a thing. It's a balancing act because I don't have unlimited time. Mm, yeah. Although actually thinking about it, here's a question. It, I it's a bit philosophical. Oh boy. <laughs> if you had unlimited time. Oh god, here we go. <laughs> would you actually see value in doing anything, or would you just think? Well, there's no point in me doing it now because I've literally got eternity to do it later. So, in well, other words, 
Is it only the fact that life is finite that gives meaning to anything that we do? Well, I mean, it depends how you define value in this. Because if you're doing something that you enjoy, unless you're doing it so much that you get bored of it, I think that you'd still enjoy it if you had an unlimited amount of time on Earth. But I suppose that you would... Um, I guess, I guess that your prior, that your priorities might be slightly different because you knew that you would have time to um, to do to do whatever to do whatever you want if you didn't if you did need to get um, stuff done before. Yeah, you know what I mean. Hmm. Here's a here's a fun story. Um, a couple of years ago, I was planning to I was hoping to take. A philosophy as a course. Uh, my original plan was philosophy, what was it philosophy, arts, art, and English language? Um, English language is um, focuses more focuses more on writing, uh, whereas English li English literature is more about analysing text. So I go there and I find out that um, the place I'm going to doesn't do. English uh, language, but it does do English literature. Mm. Um, so you know, so I decided, okay, philosophy, art, and <laughs> English, English, English literature. They get there on the on the open day. They you know they get they hand out the timetables and I look, and I see, oh, philosophy is not on there. So I go to someone and I ask about it. I was the only person who took philosophy that year. Yeah. So it just so it just wasn't running. So I so I decided, okay, I'll I won't do philosophy. I'll do sociology, art, and and English literature. Every single sociology lesson, bar one, clashed with art, so I couldn't take that. So I ended up doing what was it? Um, English lit, art, and psychology. So psychology was essentially my third choice. And yet it was the one that I got the highest in. Well, it appears that you have stumbled upon some of the flaws in the mainstream educational system. Yeah, that's true. That's true enough. But yeah, it, it's, just almost, mm. it's just almost like the, the thing that I didn't want to actively take is the thing I got the highest in. Yeah, well, sometimes that's just how it ends up. Yeah, I guess so. Speaking of English language, I've not managed to write anything in such a long oh. time. Yeah, but of course, just because your school doesn't offer something doesn't mean you can't do it. You can't get good at it. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> Kang says, "Oh right, I see." Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Right. I also want to think about whether I want to have any sort of bigger road down here. Actually, I don't think I do, because I've got this little dirt road coming down here, which is coming from up here, which is actually a somewhat major road in this area, meaning that it actually uh, comes from out of bounds and continues on and continues on and doesn't just end. So I think what I'll do is have a little, maybe a little covered bridge or something here, and then have that road continue down that valley as well into the off basically i suppose for something like this um it's a balancing act because you know you want to put accessories quote unquote and you know you want to put buildings you want to put water towers but you don't want to put in too many of those you don't want to overload it with accessories you you want to know where to sort of leave emptiness and where emptiness looks the best mm -hmm. yes absolutely and it is not easy uh, um, no, for, because that. one part of it is, of course, emptiness for the sake of aesthetics. In some areas, it just looks better empty, which is really difficult to do. But the majority of the reason is emptiness because of performance, because trains... Yeah. Is, yeah. Um, but yes, you're absolutely right. You're right. I'm assuming that Trains 2021 has come out. Uh, no, there wasn't one. 
There was Trains 2019, which came out in 2018, and then Trains 2022, which came out, well, slash is coming out this year. Oh. Uh, Kango says, uh, you, you, you're not going to offer me this. Flipping it. Thaneford School of Somber Wellingford North. Well, I'm just going to do it anyway, so there. Uh, and he also says, last year, I actually started work on my own level for Human Fall Flat. Also said in Italy, meant to be taking inspiration from Venice, but that's still in early stages. Here are three pictures. I've also opened the channel on Kanga Cord up to the public just now. Uh, and that is, there's a link to, presumably, the uh, channel, that's the word, the channel of, um, of his Discord server where you can find those. So yeah, go join Kangos if you're not, if you haven't. <laughs> um, Actually, it it leads to a specific picture because the ending ah, is a .png. Yeah, ah, it just links the picture, yeah. mm -hmm. which is on hosted on his server. So yes, technically so true. Find, yeah, so go yeah, so go and go and um, join. I nearly said follow then. Go and join his <laughs> server anyway. If you can manage to find it, I'm not actually sure yeah, where the. Sure. <laughs> um, it's where probably the... in his it's probably in his Twitch about section somewhere. That's a good point. Or in the description, yeah. Yeah, I also I, I it's it's a bit shameless, but do you mind if I not now, obviously, but do you mind if I plug mine? No, go ahead, go ahead. I'll do it. I'll do it when um, when we're done. I'll do it when you're done. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Kanga says, thank you, it is in there, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, had a great, I, I had a great talk with um, a couple of people in Kanga server. Because something that I've noticed about Kanga server, and it's something that I've kind of been um, wanting to talk, to talk to them about, is that it just seems like a whole bunch of really nice people in there. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, the crowd that you attract is kind of dependent on how you present yourself. Mm, because, yeah. like, for example, I mean, it's the same on my server. The people on my server are, mo actually, all of them that I that are currently on there are genuinely good people. Mm. At least as far as I know. Some of them I don't know much about, but at least they've not done anything bad on my server, so that's a plus. Yeah, um, yeah but if I presented myself as a more, how do I say this, mainstream streamer? Like, you yeah. know what I mean. Shouting constantly and uh, playing. Just not, being a, just not being a good person. Well, not necessarily not being a good person. I mean, more mainly the sort of the sort of people that are very popular on Twitch. Then that is the sort of crowd that I would attract, and then I'm sure my server would be a whole lot less wholesome, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's, I mean, it's the thing that I've been sort of um, noticing with where I am in my life. People, do, I mean, it might, be, it might just be a cultural thing, but people don't seem to be willing or it doesn't seem to be accepted to just say, you know what, I care about. It just doesn't seem to be something that is very, um, you don't know what VTubing is. I have no idea. Mate! Okay, I've actually been getting into it um, a couple of months ago. What it is, yeah, that's what Kanga says, virtual, virtual, am virtual, virtual avatar oh, being yeah. animated. Yeah. I know, I know what that means. I just, I, well, I know what it is. I just didn't know the term. Hmm. Through yeah. the face cam, it detects your face moves. Not just your face moves, they're also um, full body. Um, uh, 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 yeah, f full body ones as well. Yeah, which which leads me on to again another humble brag. I've got a VR headset. <laughs> Just don't get lost in it. No, I, my, the first time I ever tried out one, um, I had to because I've got because I've got glasses. Um, it wasn't one of the ones that was adjustable when I first tried one out. Hmm. Um, and <laughs> so I had to take it off to put it on. You know that takes a bit away from the experience. But when I took it off. It took me fully about five minutes to sort of get back into the real world. Um, but you do get used to it fairly quickly. Hmm. Although that does give me an idea of someone, of like a, an idea for a book or something. 
where you know of course the trope of someone puts it on they take it off and it's still there <laughs> mm. yes yeah I suppose I mean that's the thing with that's the thing for as far as I know with a lot of VTubers they don't show their face at all and their sort of identity is built around their their um, their avatar so the fact that you've already shown your face um, unless you like try to an and you let, let, yeah unless you animate basically something that looks like you in VR space hmm that doesn't sound appealing to me hmm I do I, I, I never used I never I never kind of used to get it but I suppose it's good for people who aren't confident or comfortable with showing their face you know on while well, streaming or on the internet internet you know which is a, oh yeah yeah a, of course it's a perfectly reasonable thing yeah um, but they do want to have a face, I suppose. Yeah. Rather than just be, rather than just being a voice. Yeah, I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm just saying that it doesn't no, no, appeal no. to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. I get you. Huh, there you go. Um, yeah, now you've got plenty to read, if you want yes. to. Um, <clears throat> Kango says, "Thank you." Fun fact: I actually, I had actually created the Kango Chord server back in 2020. It's just a means of privately organizing the projects I'm working on. Omzi 2, Trains, Own Game Projects, etc. And when the group convo for ATS slash ETS2 convo streams got too crowded, convoy streams rather, got too crowded, the 10, the 10 people limit, I decided to shovel, to shovel some channels around <coughs> and opening it to the public, use a sort of, a sort of hub for organising the convoys, and also for others to see what projects I'm working on. That's the point, yeah. How are your own game projects going? Kango, because I remember you speaking about some of them a while back, but I've not—I don't think I've uh, heard heard or seen anything since then. Vigorous, so vigorous yeah. typing. Yes. Kango is typing. I forgot more what I was going to say. There we go. Um, what's the What's the plan next for this? So, after I finished this area, which this is where this branch line is going to end. So, on the map. So this is up here on the map. If I'll, it'll when when you catch up, up here. <laughs> So, in universe, this branch line is this line is continuing over the bridge and through the tunnel and to lands unknown. Mm -hmm. But on the map, this is where it's terminating. The reason why I'm not just ending it here and why I have the tunnel there is so that I can spawn trains at the portal on the other side of the tunnel, which will then come through here or that go into the tunnel. Plus, I can also have sessions start here. Like, for example, oh, a train has come to the, through to this place, to this little yard, and you're now taking over as driver, or engineer, technically, because it's America. And now you can continue from here, so it's start the session there. So that's the end, that's, but this is going to be the end of this branch. So then I've got a couple of branches left to finish. Well, I've got this one, which is by that lake, that goes over to the right. So it's going to go over this way. Whereas the one I'm currently working on goes north, this one's going to go east. Mm -hmm. For a little bit, to a little town. This branch down here is finished on the left. Yeah, that's just done. Then down here I've got one that's going to go a little bit over through this valley again to the west. Mm -hmm. That's two I still need to do. This is finished, that's all finished. And down here, at the very bottom of the route where it's in the city, I want to have probably like one or two small stations and then a terminus. So that's the third thing. So those are the three branches that I still need to finish and then the map is pretty much done. And I say pretty much because I still have to do stuff like replacing some assets maybe or putting in street lights or configuring industries or things like that. But from the other Flesh, fleshing it out and adding in the little detail. Yeah, also, the <laughs> thing is, because I've been working on this route for so long, my 
root build root building techniques and style has naturally evolved over time which means that some of the areas that i've built at the start which is in 2020 now look a little bit outdated a little bit yeah, yeah. so i will have i will probably well depending on how the areas on a case by case basis i will go through and update some of those areas like for example yeah. placing more grass plants or bushes or things like that but yeah then after that it's time it's going to be time to make sessions actually choosing what to drive and where to drive and the ai trains and all that stuff which is going to be fun and i'm going to stream a couple of sessions but most of it i want to do offline because people who when they buy this I want it to be a surprise of what's going to happen in the sessions. Mm -hmm. So will you likely replace these sessions with someone else? Or? No, the ones that I make on stream are going to stay that way. People are just going to know what's going to happen. But I'm going to make others that I'm not going to showcase. Oh, in right. so, so more work for you then? Well, I'm going to make an amount of sessions anyway. And it's just part of them I'm going to show. The majority I'm not. Right, okay. I'm a bit scared for how long Kango's been typing for. Oh dear. He's probably just trying to find the right words. See, it's not yeah. that much. Yeah. Oh, there, wait. Um, oh, yes, I remember. I've been, <clears throat> I've been most prominently working on Project Hop Frog Hop working title, which is an N64 inspired 3D platformer, which I actually started back in 2020. But I've picked up development again in January this year. I'm making the I'm making the models oh, flipping it. I'm making the models in Blender and the game itself in Unity. So yeah, it's a 3D platformer. But instead of running around and jumping, you can only jump in the direction that, that you can. The space in the, du <clears throat> the duration of how long you hold down the space bar determines how high and far your jump will be. There, there are some pictures in it in hashtag Project Hobfrop in the Kango Core server as well. If you are interested. I like that the thing that you can only um, that you can only jump. It seems a bit like um, getting over it, where you don't have ah. any movement yourself, but you do it via um, leverage. Actually, I remember uh, when I um, when I used to when I used to come here, that Kango asked me if I was it on stream. I don't know. That he asked me whether or not I had played any 3D platformers, and aside from like. Mirror's Edge, I don't actually think I've played any like third person 3D platform platformers. I mean again I'll have a look um at my get at my at my games collection in just a bit, but I don't actually think I've played anything like that. Hmm. Which is which seems ludicrous. I mean I've got a collection of two D platformers, but they're part of the uh Sega Mega Drive collection, which I've got on PS3. Well, I say a collection of them. It's mostly the Sonic games. Um, and yes, Kango, I do have Looney Tunes back in action. Um, although I would say that that's not an exclusive. I would say that that's not got that much platforming in in it. I would say that's more of like a action and adventure game rather than exclusively a a 3D platformer. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna have a have a look now, and uh, I'll get back to you. Farewell, my dear friends. <laughs> okay, so I've decided to put a kink in the bridge because having it, uh, the issues with the issue with tunnels in trains, at least uh, conventional tunnels that you don't have to piece together out of multiple bits and dig holes and things like that is that they can only go at 90 degrees, the entrance and exits. So this is facing... Which way is this facing? This is facing east? Yes. So this is facing directly east, or if I turn it far enough the other way, it would be facing directly north, the, the portal, the entrance portal. Which means that if I want to go diagonally, it would mean the tunnel needs to face east, then curve around, go diagonally, then curve back and then face this way. So I can't have a diagonal, which my bridge is coming in at, pretty much exactly diagonal. So... Um, am, I, am I allowed to be here? Um, hello. Yes, if you would like. We are doing voice 
voice chat. Mr. W is here as well. Oh, hi, Mr. W. I haven't seen. I haven't but he's to you he's for he's he's well. I say he's here. He's currently looking something up. He'll be back in a moment. Okay. Um. I just got home from work, so. Ooh. That's all I'm doing. Okay. Hello, Code Monkey. Welcome. What a bizarre restriction. Well. It's a feature that tunnels have had since train. Well, ever since trains was first released, it's a legacy thing. It's got to do. I think it's got to do with the decals because back then it was they only had the ten meter grid size, and they've you see they've got this portal over the the tunnel, this this rock face, which covers the fact that over here you can see all of this. The terrain is just gone. It's just a rectangular shape that's gone. And that rectangular shape has to be on the grid. And so they, back then, they decided, okay, well then, the so that it fits the facade, or rather the connecting piece, connecting piece, is on that as well. So when I put this tunnel on here, to lead into the portal back here, I had to put it on facing east or north. I chose east because that's where the hillside is. Which means that the bridge, which I originally wanted to go straight across, means it would have gone straight across and then curve over, which just, just didn't look great at all. So that's why I decided to put a little kink in the bridge, so that it looks more like a fluid, fluid curve, I should say. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm back, hello. Hello, we've got another guest in voice chat. I heard, hello. yes, hello. Hello, I haven't talked to you for a long time. I know. Where have you been? Tired most most of the time, which is why I've not really been able to join. But it, yeah, it, yeah, it is good to be back. I'm I'm pretty tired right now because I just got home from work. I'm not going to stay here for long. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Thanks for stopping by. I'll, I'll be here for a little bit, but I'm not going to be here like the entire rest of the stream, though. Mhm. Mm That's okay. Well, at least... Do you have a new guy in chat? Huh? What? Do you have a new what? guy, to uh, Code Monkey? Code Monkey. Ah, uh, he's, oh, yeah, he's been around. He's been around, yeah. <laughs> no, I haven't seen him before. Yeah. So, okay, so, now for the chat. Um, Mr. W, with, with some games... Hang on. With some games, the game is actually very different depending on the platform. Is this the, the Looney Tunes back in action game you played? Looks much more action-adventure than the one I thought you meant, and also the one which I played a bit. And there's a picture... And that one is not the one that I meant. Uh, Anthony Sarson says, hi, hello. Uh, Code Monkey uh, says, well, at least that part is automatic, unlike the whole decals in other in other TS. Yeah, so, um, so one moment. I quick note of that is that while that is automatic, and with some tunnels it works fine with more modern assets, but, for example, this asset that I am using here is a very old asset, which means that it's... Textures are extraordinarily blurry on the outside. So, I mean, over here it might be fine. I don't know, because it's further away. But when I use it over where the dam is... Yes, yes, please. All the puns that you have, please. Yes. Um, I've had to hide that by manually placing boulder assets and shrub and tree assets. And then an another entrance arch as well so that it actually looks uh, high quality. So... Sorry, I'm probably gonna head out. Okay, well thank you for stopping by. Have a good night. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye -bye. See ya. Um, Kango... I, Kango says, uh, this is a 3D platform one. And I looked at the picture, and yes, that is the one I've played. But again, I, I wouldn't class that as a 3D platformer mainly. Um, but again, you know, I've not played a lot of them, so I, I don't, I, I, might, <clears throat> I might not know what does and what doesn't clarify as a 3D platformer. Classify, uh, says, you mean. Classify, that's the word. What did I say? Clarify. Say? <laughs> I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm all, not flustered, but I'm saying a lot of stuff, and so my brain is going a bit fast. Um, Kangra says, damn, that can look so good. <laughs> damn, um, because it's by uh, the dam, of course. Damn, damn. And Kangra says, oh, right. There's Mr. W. Yes, in regards to that, I've had a look, and uh, oh god, I forgot. <laughs> I, I I had a look, and um, the um, I've got I I saw and I had and I got Prince of Persia for the PS3, 
and I had one more which I've currently forgotten. Um, so I'm just going to go and grab that again. I think I'm going to try to use the plateau tool to make oh this boy. a little bit smoother. Oh boy, the, pl the, pl the pl plateau tool, I remember that. Uh, <laughs> Sonic Unleashed was the other um, really platform I looked at. Um, I've also got Rayman Legends, which is a 2D one, um, which is a lot of fun to do. Yeah. Again, I haven't. I didn't really look at my PS2 ones though. I know I've still got um, back in action. Have you actually seen Looney Tunes back in action, the film that the games are based on? I haven't. No. Ah. I'll put it. I'll, I'll put it. I'll put it on my radar. Um. Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I'm gonna. I'll say. I'll see if I can remember. Ooh, have you Actually, seen? I've got a... Have you seen Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Yes, I have. Ah, good. Um, I, I did quite. I did. I did <laughs> think that was quite a good, quite a good film. I think that um, that is. Sorry, did you want to say something? No, you go on. You go on. I think that that is. I'm not sure if it's the only, but it's one of the only times that you see Roger Rabbit. Well, no, that you see Daffy Duck and Donald Duck on screen in the same film, in the same scene. Well, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I suppose it makes sense. Because of, of course, the competing companies, legal issues, yeah. things. Yeah, so it, so it makes sense. Yes, I have a, um, I have a list of, not just, mo not just movies, uh, but there's also books there that I intend to look up at some point. Neil Gaiman's Neverwhere. Um, the Dark Powers of Tolkien, which is like a um, like an analysis of uh, you know the Dark Powers used in Tolkien's book, you know Tolkien, Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. etc. Uh, I believe there's a movie based on the Hitman games, which is I'll look up. Um, Gravity's Rainbow by Thomas Pynchon, I think. Um, Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. Um, all of, some of these are quite old ones. Uh, Notes from Underground by a Russian gentleman, which I can't remember nor pronounce the name of. Um, the Little Prince by I think a French ah. author, um, I've... which I've listened to an audio, which I've listened to at least some of an audiobook of The Little Prince, and it's, yeah, it's really good. Mm -hmm. um, the Minor. Um, minor or Minor? The mi M I N E R. The ah. Minor. Yes. Um, Dogra Magna, which there's an audiobook of, but I believe it's only in Japanese because I think it was, you know, released. The book was released in Japan, and the subtitles are in English, so I can't exactly, you know, just listen mm. to it, which mm -hmm. is what I prefer to do. Um, Demian, that's D E M I A N. Um, so another one which we've talked about before, I think. Coraline. Ah yes. Um, which I've watched a couple clips from. See, I'll see you, Eliza. Yeah. Um, Coraline is astonishing in the way that it is made. It is a stop-motion film, but it's a full feature-length film, and the amount of the sheer... it Like, the people who made that, it's, it is... Insane the amount of movement and detail and like it they made stop motion animation so smooth and so incredibly high quality that at several parts in it when I was watching it well we when we were watching it we weren't sure if it was stop motion or CGI it's only really in a few bits like for example the cat's fur how that moves a few other bits as well but that you can definitely say, okay, no, this is stop motion. And there's a like, special feature on it where they, you can see how they make it. And with each frame, just moving the armature a fraction of a millimeter, that a little bit, that a little bit, then taking another picture, moving it a fraction more. And each frame of the entire movie 
made in that way, sometimes with the entire landscape being alive and growing and moving and is just insane. Good movie, I can recommend it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, I've watched the scene, the piano playing scene with the other father, and even that is just phenomenal. Um, something I've also just remembered now is that it was, which you probably know, it was based on a book by Neil Gaiman. Um, which is something that I will look up. Neil Gaiman, of course, worked with Terry Pratchett on uh, Good Omens, and I'm a big Pratchett fan. Um, what else what other do I have? Um, something that a friend of mine... Actually, actually I'll read chat before I continue. Uh, uh, says, Who said ah, yes, that? Who wrote that in chat? With... with... <laughs> <laughs> it took me long to get that. Um... Kangaroo says, and this is referring to the Daffy Duck and Donald Duck scene. Ah, yes, with the piano playing competition. Yes, I remember that. Mm -hmm. um, Eliza, specifically Eliza, so I don't know whether Viju is still here. Um, Eliza says, well, i got to go. I'm tired and I want to sleep. I've already said bye, but see you, mate. Um, all right, thanks for coming. Um, Eliza asks Kango, tomorrow's stream is at is at 8 o'clock GTM plus 2, Kango. Uh, six o'clock. So that yeah, six o'clock, six p.m. Six p.m. British summer time. Uh, uh, Kango has linked a behind the scenes to Coraline on YouTube. Um, <laughs> um, Vija, Vija has put X, lowercase X, uppercase X, Coraline underscore seven one no two one seven uppercase X lowercase X was banned for wall hacks. <laughs> Yes. Um, Kango just clarifies the time for, for Vija. Um, Eliza says, noted, anyway, I'm off. Um, Kango says, all right, and says, bye, good night. Um, mm -hmm. And Kango just clarifies that it was behind the scenes rather than behind the scene. <sighs> yeah, the, the other ones. Um, a friend of mine talked to me about a film called Alice by Jan, so that's J-A-N, and the surname is spelt S-V-A-N-K-M-A-J-E-R. And I think my friend said that it was like a stop motion, like a stop motion surreal, quite dark parody of Alice in Wonderland, hmm. um, which sounds interesting. It has a kind of, because um, there's a game a bit like it called Alice Madness Returns which is seemingly quite a, you know, quite, again, another quite a dark look at Alice in Wonderland. Um, the left, the, I put The Leftovers down, uh, which is a book and a, and a TV series. Um, the Fight Club book, you know, the book that the um, 1999 Dave Fincher film was based on, which I've seen and I don't actually, I don't actually like. I mean, it's got a lot of trade, but I don't actually like it. I'm not um, sure if I've seen it or not. I, I, it really doesn't strike me as your thing, um, like, at all. But it was ahead of its time, I'll give it that, but it seems to be based on... It seems to be far more focused on the message that it, it, that it feels like it has to say than creating a cohesive and understandable and, like, logical narrative, which I've always been a bit iffy about in any, with everything. And the most recent one, um, I just saw a book in, I think, a chat, and I think it, was it a charity shop? I think it was a charity shop, which I thought, oh, okay, I'll make a note of that. Well, no, it was a DVD, actually, um, and it's called Wizards of Earthsea. So, now for the best of chat. Uh, Kanga says, thanks for reading the chat, by the way, Mr. W, I, I appreciate it, it's not at all. Kanga says, oh, right, um, I believe in referring, I can't remember what I was referring to. What do you mean? What, what do you know? When Kangaroo, when Kangaroo said, when Kangaroo said, oh right, um, huh. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that was referring to something I said, but I can't remember what it was. Um, it'd be great if there were timestamps. You can Should enable them. If you go onto the little cog icon, chat settings, and then you go into, hold on, where is it? Chat appearance. It should be near the top. Then you can toggle Time, on timestamp time for new messages. For new, for new messages, yeah, I've just got it. Uh, sweet. 
I'll put that on. Way there we go. And Kango said, and Kango said that he was referring to the dark look at Alice in Wonderland. Thing. Yes, I think that's that's been done quite a bit. Actually, it's been done in a song, and not like a kid's song either. It's done by the band. I think it's Shine Down, and they've put and they've done Her Name Is Alice. It's a really good song as well. Um, and Kango said, all the Queen's horses and all the Queen's men couldn't find out where they were all watching a Twitch stream in the middle of the woods. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I've but, always kind of wanted to write like a dark fantasy thing, but I've never got the chance to do it. In what way do you mean dark? Because the, the well, term dark can mean a lot of different things. Yeah, well, I guess kind of like dark in atmosphere, in setting. I mean, I'm really, again, it's, a, it's another game I haven't played, but I'm really into um, this, like, the setting and the atmosphere of bloodborne so maybe that kind of something thing like a like a gothic kind of victorian thing so you mean dark uh, as in uh, miserable i i guess i i guess so i mean i don't i don't know i don't know how you quantify i, pro I probably wouldn't do it in like miserable in terms miserable in terms of setting but probably not miserable in terms of what you read what you read about or what you see because i really I, I genuinely don't like stuff like that it's the reason why i don't like the book a uh, thousand splendid sons by calabasini it's just got so much like genuinely horrible stuff in it not horrible from a writing standpoint but horrible in that you're watching the characters you know you're you're watching the characters go through these things and it doesn't help that it's based on actual events um, mm. And I had to, I had to do it for, for the school thing, and I did not, I did not enjoy reading it. Um, then I would not said, suggest <laughs> that you read, uh, nineteen eighty four. Oh god. Although <laughs> it is good as a warning, mm, so that yes. you are, <laughs> care, so that you're wary to not let that actually happen. Yes. Um, speaking of Orwell, I have actually read. Well, not well. I've listened to. Um, Animal Farm, and I really do, and I do quite like that. Uh, anyway, so for the rest of the chat, uh, Kanga says he's not proud of the band Shine Down. Yeah, they're like a, um, they're like a quite not too heavy, but they are a metal band, so I don't think it would really be your thing. Um, Code Monkey says. <laughs> He says, once upon a time in a faraway town, someone had stolen all the light bulbs. Um, Kango says, once upon a time, and then in a separate con I in, wish. In, a, in a separate speech, in a separate um, speech, in a far off kingdom. <laughs> yeah, you, you were saying that you were going to say something? No, the I wish, like into the woods. I wish uh, yeah, but, oh, yeah. more than anything. So long ago. Five years. Were you going to say something? Were you it feels like it's been longer than that. Hmm. It does, actually, yeah. Yeah. Like, well, were you going to say something before that? Like, it sounded like... Um, or were you not? I don't know. I might have been. Yeah. And it says, more than the moon. In the song, more than the moon. Yes, I remember that. Uh, Kango says it, it feels much longer, lo much longer ago, even to me, and I wasn't even in it. In it. <laughs> <laughs> it was so weird to hear you say "in it," Kango. <laughs> well, I say "here." You know what I mean. Um, yeah. In it, like I N N I T, or in it, yes. as in short for initialization, oh, okay. which is more the coding thing. Mm -hmm. Kango, Kango gasps. He gasps at that. <laughs> um, but yeah. Annoyingly, I haven't managed to get any, um, any of the fake campaign done um, recently. Kango says, "I've I've never even used in it. Oh, God. I've never even used in it. Referring to the coding thing, in it. Yeah, it, in but." It. In it, I N N I T just means isn't it? In yeah, it in means it. isn't in it. it yeah, in it, blood kind of stuff I hear, I used to hear a, a lot of the time, which drove me mad.
But yeah, about the Fate campaign. Yeah, I mean, I've not. Yeah. yeah. Is it just. Yeah. It, I, I mean, I think I've gotten quite close to the ending of it. It's just how to write it. And, you know, a bit of a, you know, mostly a lack of. You know, a lack of motivation to do it. Um, if you're experiencing a lack of motivation. Yes. And you have the basics of the setting and a vague idea of where you want the plot to go in a vague direction. I would suggest tell it to your players. Get your players to make characters and run the first session. I mean, I can't think of anything that would give more motivation than that actually getting started. That's true, yeah. And if um, it... If it It'll probably go well. Probably not how you're expecting, but it'll probably go well. If it doesn't go well, I know for a fact that the, your players are more than happy to give actually helpful feedback. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't go well, well, then you've got experience. And you, you know that your players will be understanding of that because you know your players. Yeah. So I'd, I'd say just go for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's something that, um, like, um, because I think for some of the for some of the stuff, I've got like alternate past, but not for not for all of that. So that is another thing that I will probably do, and that is probably something that will um, sort of require. Well, I I suppose require less motivation, um, but I, I I am quite close to the end. Like as far as I know, there's only one more thing I need to do. It's just I'm not, like, and I think I know what I'm putting. It's just getting the motivation to to do it. And I don't want it just, just to feel crowbarred in. Mm. So, a lot of, okay, so I don't know how helpful this is going to be, but when I first started jamming, as you know, because you were there. <laughs> well, technically, yeah, you were there as a player. I planned a, a lot ahead. And I planned all sorts of different branching pathways. And, oh, if they do that, then they might not meet this NPC. So if they don't meet this NPC, then how are they going to get that information? Well, I'm, not, I'm going to need to have this other NPC, which means I'm going to have to uh, have a name and a backstory and a town and all that sort of stuff, which they just... <laughs> I mean, they never even got near that place. <laughs> so what I've found is I tend to have more ideas of how things could be connected as opposed to writing out different branching pathways. Yeah. So, for example... Okay, I'll give, I'll give one of the... Star Trek Pathos episodes as an example because that's already happened and everybody's already well you you don't know but there's, others do. There's one of the chaotic experience. <laughs> so in the episode in question the players were tracking down this starship of a thief who had stolen an artifact from them through very dangerous means. And the thief ki did kind of trick the players, and so naturally they wanted to get the stuff back and bring the thief to justice. So, what I had planned is, okay, they go to this planet, they... Uh, how are they going to find the ship? I know the ship is landed on the planet. How are they going to find it? Well, I thought, okay, they might be a... well... This I, I have the setting in my head. I know what the setting says. And the setting says, okay, either the players use the ship's sensors to detect the, the ship they're looking for. So basically, they just literally look for it. Or they might be able to get the local government to share records. Or, and I said, I wanted a third thing. So I said, well... They're going to need some sort of record if they're not looking for it. Maybe there's an automated sensor platform that they could maybe 
either hack into or get access to in some way to get this information. What the players did is, I think, I actually can't remember exactly, but I think they just looked for it with sensors, which is the, the easiest thing. But I just had those other options in case they wanted something else. Okay. The next bit is, I know the players are going to go down there to the ship and have a look at it. But how am I actually going to get the players from the ship to where the thief's employer is living on the planet? How am I going to do that? Well, I, hmm, actually this is a little bit of a behind the scenes moment which actually like, players don't know about, but it's fine, it's for a good cause. Then I'm gonna watch this. Kango is one of my players. Ah. <laughs> uh, but no, it's fine. The episode has happened a while ago. By the way, if you're curious what episode this is, it's um, A Thief by Hook or Crook. Oh, I remember that. So, uh, yeah. The question was, how do I get the players from the ship on the planet, the landed ship, which is abandoned, in this parking garage, basically, to where the thieves' employers? I thought, well, either they're going to... I thought, okay, well, the easiest way would be if there is an NPC that knows how this connection works. So I thought maybe they're going to ask around to see if maybe anyone knows who the ship belongs to. The second thing is, I thought, well, maybe since this is a thief, maybe she's annoyed some other people. And maybe some other people noticed that the ship is landed and maybe some other people are waiting for her to return. So I put a shady looking guy there to as a potential source of information for the players. And that is pretty much as far as I'd planned that. Because I knew that the players, whichever way they're gonna go with this, I know what the world how the world works, so I can improvise from that point. What the players did was completely different. Like, really, completely different. One of the players, Dodd, she, her supporting character, took a focus in logistics. Mm -hmm. So, while the others were distracting the shady guy, because they were suspicious of him, to get a scan of the ship to figure out, okay, our cargo, the stolen cargo, is not on board. This... <laughs> this... Supporting character went off on her own, well, on his own, this supporting character is a male, and had a look at the logistics of this place. How does cargo get unloaded? Where does the cargo go? How does it get transported around the colony, the city? How does, it get, how does that work? Now, I hadn't planned at all in that direction. I had a vague idea of monorails that connect the different areas underground. And so I thought, ah, well, this is a perfect way for them to locate the, wh what they're trying to find, if they roll well enough. And sure enough, she rolled really high so many times that she managed to find out some, some uh, like a break room for the workers. And asked around a bit and found out how, that the cargo gets split depending on what type of cargo it is. And so that narrowed down the options. And then I thought, well, okay, the easiest way, since we were, since we were running low on time a little bit, I was thinking, okay, the easiest thing to do is I'll have a roll to see if she finds a worker who remembers a package that was unloaded from this ship. It's only been like a couple of days. And who recalls along which monorail it was sent, where it's delivered. And so she rolled, she rolled really high, and that's how they went on their merry way. Now, I hadn't planned for it to go that way, and all the ways that I had pl planned for them to actually figure it out were completely never even touched on. Bloody hell. 
And you might think that that is stressful. And it can be if you're not sure how your world works. Especially if you're live streaming. <laughs> yeah. But if you're like, if I, for example, if I had not known how the world works, if I just, if, if in my mind, I only knew, okay, they land there, somehow the cargo gets transported, who knows, then I would have been in trouble because then I could not have answered the questions. But because I knew how my world works, I was able to improvise. And so actually it's in a way the opposite of stressful because if your players come up with a with an idea and you think well that could feasibly work then if you make that work it's gonna be more rewarding for the players because the player came up with that even if you don't tell them that so I wouldn't, I wouldn't, as long as you are confident about your setting, how your world works, like, for example, if it's magic, as long as you're confident about, okay, magic, here are some examples of what magic can do, here are some examples of what magic can't do, this is vaguely how magic works, then figuring out, planning out the details, I don't think is necessary, at least depending on the game that you're on. <laughs> It's not so much planning out the details, it's just making sure that there are, for me at least, multiple ways to do each thing so that it's not, so mm -hmm. that the players don't feel veiled on it. And another thing, making it like as the players, well, not as the players do it, but like, um, like not making it all and then maybe making more like the day after we, we um, played, I'd be up for that if I had more time because for most of the day like for pretty much all the days of the week I am busy with other stuff for the majority of the day so I would much rather get everything well not not get everything down but get everything that I can down before we do it so that I'm comfortable that they'll only they will likely only need to be small planning if they do not go if not if they go off track, but if they do something that I'm not expecting, if you if you get what I mean. Hmm. But yeah, I, I'm. It's only a bit. It's, I think it's only a bit more that I need to do, and I might even be able to get some done, um, if not Monday, possibly on Tuesday. Um. But yeah, we will. But yeah, thank you for you know genuinely do you know genuinely thank you for you know the advice and stuff, and I I, I do know that you know. Well, yeah, I, I do know that they would be understanding about it, but of course, there's a thing if you know. I think with everyone, you know, you don't want to you, know, you don't want to let people down. Um, but I, you know, I am only going to do it if I'm comfortable with the campaign itself, but also if I'm comfortable um, with the, you know, with my. So, hello, people hey. after the cut. So, thank you. Uh, let me read. You know, I know that, that, that I know that is going to be editing. For you and, eh. because, and you know because, because I've recently started doing editing I know how dull that is it's not that much but... it's not that big of an issue honestly thank you um, uh, I don't mind reading chat either if you want to keep working I honestly don't mind okay sure thank you very much and I do have sure. another thing I, I wanted to say to what you said but after, after chat <laughs> yeah sure sure uh, Kango says uh, yeah I'm excited for it too referring to my fake campaign um, I'm not much of a GM myself but I'll always be happy to give nice honest feedback as a player uh, Kanga says, oh yeah, I've pla I, I planned so much when it was my first ever time GMing back in uh, 2019. And it was a one-shot. Definitely learned a lot from it, though. Oh yeah, Sharon Ice. Um, Kanga asking, should he mute his stream for the uh, meta thing that you were saying? Um, will you wave when you're done with spoilers so that <laughs> I know? Um, I've, I offered to say in chat when Kanga should unmute. Kanga says, I'm not sure, I've not muted it. Would you like me to mute it, Sharon Ice? Um, I don't think it, it'd get me it'd get me any dangerous meta knowledge anyway. But thank you. That's for me when he offered to put it in the chat. Uh, then he says to me, "So yeah, remember in the Shore Leave episode, see, season one, episode four, the last one you joined, when that trader had sold the smoky quartzy sphere thing? I think I remember something vaguely like that. Yeah. 
Um, well, well, it turns out it was radioactive, and so gave and so gave poor Do- Dovia a good old dose Devia. of radiation poison. Devia for a, a good old dose of radiation poisoning for a few episodes. Thankfully, it has subsided now, though. Kanga says, "I remember Dovia just fell asleep in the official senior staff meeting." Uh, but yeah, it was it was near her fault. Um, Kanga says, "If you're live streaming." And if it does get stressful, then there's always the thought of, well, at least it's being archived to comfort you. <laughs> 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 oh, that reminds me of the first ever episode we did. Something that Kango said, it, it just broke me, and I just started giggling like a child. It was, oh, it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kango says in, in speech marks, after this, I'll be able to watch the archive and, and analyze my actions as a GM and determine whether the decisions I took were advisable or inadvisable, and see how I'll be able to improve, given that any of the list abovely, abovely listed negative points are, in fact, true. Uh, Nella says hi. Hello, Nella. Uh, Kanga says, Oni su su. Oni there. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, Nella. Uh, on YouTube, it's probably going to get swallowed by the compression. That's about, you know, the thing by your name, which I prefer not to be done. Um, uh, Kanga says, ah, d- Kinga says, ah, didn't mean to distract me. Here are four images of the N64-inspired 3D platformer game I'm working on, if anyone is interested. I will just check those out in a bit. Uh, Nella says, it wasn't your full name. Yes, but I don't care. It was at least part of it. Um, Kanga says that he remembers what it what it was. But I, I don't remember, A, what it was, and B, what there was to remember. Um... I'll just check out the images you put in. Yeah, I'm quickly getting the bridge as it of the of the other route. Dude, oh wow, only the top of it. Yeah. Oh my. Ooh. Oh my. That is a creepy house. Oh, that looks. I only looked at the top one at the, at the bit can go. That looks really. That's really like old. Well, you say N64 or maybe PS1 style game. That looks really good. But yeah, did you say you had something else to say in regards to, you know, the fake out thing? Uh, yeah. So, I totally get wanting to, with regard, actually, with regard to time limit, where you say, you say you're not, you don't have that much time to prepare and so you want to prepare a little ahead, I have only ever done that in very vague uh, plot points. So, trying to think of an example. Actually, while I try to think of an example, I'm going to get my bridge. Uh, I was going to say, and whilst you're thinking, I'll just read a little bit more chat. Uh, now, Kango says that he remembers what it was, and that it was where Sharadice mentioned a Dodd to remember a specific thing before going down to the planet, which then caused her to forget another thing, where I said, well, at least it's being archived. Yes, I think I remember that, and that's what caused me to make like a, a like a, um, a way mission list of stuff to bring. Which, by the way, that list, that checklist, that way, is a thing that has persisted of me playing your, your character. I've kept that bit in. <sighs> Hello. Uh, it says that, the, that my browser encountered an error whilst decoding the video. I'm just going to reload yeah. player, it says. Uh, oh dear. Um, oh yeah, Kango says that thing two was where we were on the planet and the people there had just offered us foods. IRL would have just... I, IRL, purple celery. And I proposed the idea of Yali Gwissom scanning the food behind the back and that's the bit where I didn't stop laughing. And I remember Dodd just asking me, are you okay, Mr. W? And that just made me go even more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I've, I've... I have remember you saying, it, it's the stress of being on screen. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. But if I remember, I've, I've thought of an example. So... When... Actually, I'm not sure if that's a good example. One moment. I need to think out my my thought first. You had to think of your thought. Yes. Think out my thought first. While it's uh. loading. Uh, 
Okay, so... Just quickly before you start, we have reached 11. Yes, thank you very much. I just quickly want to uh, put in the bridge. Uh, and I want to finish my thought because we're in the middle of a conversation. <laughs> so... Yeah, of course, of course, course. You know in our Saturday game, when we went back in time... Yes! Well, when I had given you that time column, I, as the GM, have had no control over when you're going to use it. That's true. I gave you that card for you to play it any time you wished. Now... That means it was impossible for me to plan out exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, that's true. So when in that one, <laughs> that one time things looked so bad that the then captain decided, okay, let's use the time column. I had to... I Okay, I knew one thing. That thing was, it's going to send you guys back to the original series era. And that's it. I didn't know anything more, because anything more depends on where you are. If you're near Klingon space, then whatever happens probably is going to involve the Klingons. If you're near Romulan space, it's probably going to involve the Romulans, and so on. So when you used it in Cardassian space, and there is no reference to Cardassian stuff in the original series era. I went on the little bits that I had planned ahead for that, which is, okay, I want the players to go back in time, mess up something, and then have to fix that thing, then find a way to get back home. That was my that those were my plot points for the time column for what I wanted to get out of it story wise. That's why I gave it to you. And that's it. I didn't plan any further ahead because anything further ahead would depend on the situation. So when you actually went back in time, I looked at the situation and thought, okay, well, what's gonna happen? What, what am I going to do? But before I even had a chance to properly get into that, the players already told me what they wanted to do. So... <laughs> it's While it's good to have a vague idea of what's going to happen, of what you want, vague plot points, like, uh, for example, okay, I'm going to have this castle with a vampire living in it. And the vampire is extorting the king because he has some sort of blackmail from three generations ago or something like that. Okay, that I, that's pretty much as much as I would think up ahead, ahead of time, like really far ahead of time. When the players are actually getting near that, like, oh, they're actually getting near close by where my vampire is. Then I'd say, then I'd think, about, okay, now, since we're actually dealing with this bit, I can flesh that out. So, well, what's the, what is the blackmail material? Well, maybe it was some sort of affair. Maybe it was the cowardly behavior of one of the royal family members during a war or anything. I don't know. So that if... The players, for some reason, encountered the vampire ahead of time. I had some little bit that I could hint towards, that I could give. And then before the next session, like the day before the session or something like that, I could flesh out more bits in that. If I had tried from the very beginning, if I tried from the very beginning to say, okay, I have this vampire, he's, gonna, he's blackmailing the king and queen because of uh, things that happened three generations ago, 
And what is that? Well, there was this guy in three generations ago who fought in a war and there was he he was a general and he ordered his troops to enter this canyon where they would be slaughtered to just by a little bit more time but he was cowardly and didn't accompany them and this is a very serious thing currently because there's a war on and they don't want to be seen as cowardly in front of their troops as well and then you, i could get so lost in that and that can work, but the danger with that is that what if the players decide to hop on a ship and just go out somewhere else? Mm. What then? So, I hope that this isn't coming across as pre prepping isn't good, because <laughs> of course that's not true. Prepping mm. is definitely good, and if you feel comfortable, that's the most important thing. That you feel yeah, that yeah. you feel confident in what you're going to do, or at least somewhat confident. You, you never feel completely confident. Um, even after so many years of GMing, I don't feel completely confident when pretty much doing anything like that. But yeah, because you're because you're putting the story into people. You're putting the story into into people's hands, mm. and there's no real indication where that I mean there's basic ideas but you don't there's no concrete way of saying okay I know that this is what they're going to do mm -hmm. yeah so I would say okay can you give me an ex a made-up example of what you've prepared or something with modified facts so that I don't <laughs> so not no spoilers with with redacted stuff in it. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Well, I'll give you. Okay, okay. Well, I'll give you an example of something that. Like, do you want an example of a bit where I'm kind of. Like that's the thing. I'm not. I, I know where it's going to go. It's just getting the motivation, to put it down. I think because I do have an idea of where I'm, where, where it's going to go. It's getting the motivation to do it. But I'll give you an example of something that I have already done. That I'm fairly concrete, you know. Okay, so this bit, it, this bit is planned out as much as I can plan. Um, there is this, there is a bit where the players will have to acquire what is it? Where they will have to acquire um, a they will, they, they, will, they will have to acquire a specific item, and this item is stored in a particular place. Um, well, actually, actually, no. Well, they have to they have to acquire an item in order to do a specific thing, but they can also they, there is also another way around it without getting that specific thing. Uh, in order to get that specific thing, they can either convince the people involved to give it to give it to them. They can either pay them money in order to in order to get them to exchange that specific thing. Or they can able to, or they are able to steal it. That's three options that I that I was able to think of in just that little, in just that, in just that little bit. And that is a bit that I am fairly confident that I have, um, that I have done. I have not fleshed it out, but I have, I have done it. I have done what I can to ensure that the players won't feel railroaded. And at least be able to come up with stuff, come up with things if they choose to take a, spe a, sp a specific part. But I know what I'm going to do, so I won't say. Actually, I've not been able to come up with that. Would you mind doing this instead? Okay. So the bit about convincing them, or maybe purchasing it, or or just stealing it. Yeah, I think that's great. I I wouldn't. I mean, that is as much prep as I would do ahead of time, a little depending on how far ahead of time. If this is something yeah. quite a way down the line that's probably not going to happen this session or the next session, <laughs> then, yeah, I wouldn't really do that much more unless it becomes yeah. immediately relevant. That's, yeah, that's the thing. That, that bit is that bit. Yeah. Is, that bit is done. But regarding the railroading, I don't worry about the players feeling like they're being railroaded mm -hmm. 
the biggest the biggest hell so okay the, the the problem with railroading is a player has an idea tries to do it and finds no i can't do that not because something in the world stops them but just because the dm doesn't let them basically mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's railroading and that is what I did in my very first game, where you landed on that beach, and I planned for you to go one way, and the players decided, okay, well, no, we're gonna stick around and build a shelter. I didn't want them to do that, so I had scary animal noises getting closer from the jungle, thus motivating you to move. Mm -hmm. That is a classic example of railroading. You said you want to do something, I say, that's not what I want you to do, do this other thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, the easiest and most relax, <laughs> relaxed way of getting around that is to just know how the world works without the players being in it, basically. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. for example, in, in your situation, with, with that specific example, Say, say the players want to they hear of this item and they have some idea of okay, we're not going to they they don't we're not gonna we, we tried convincing them to give it to us no, that doesn't work. That didn't work, we don't have enough money to buy it, stealing it is too risky. The player, one player has an idea and thinks, okay, we're gonna blackmail them. We're gonna make up some story, make up some proof, and we're gonna blackmail them to give us the item. Then in that case, if this were railroaded, the GM might say, you might say, uh, that I, that doesn't work. Choose something else. Do something else. You can't do that. That doesn't work with my setting. That would be railroading. But in case, but but, if you know vaguely how the world works, then you know how to respond to that. Mm -hmm. Whether that be that, I mean, for example, if the people that they're gonna try to blackmail. Maybe they have got really good connections in town or with, with their peers, and it would be ludicrous that these people would have actually done that. So they're not afraid to be of being blackmailed. So maybe and that, that would just be you knowing, okay, they are popular, they've got good connections. In just in your mind, they're popular. So of course they're not afraid of being blackmailed because everybody knows they wouldn't do that. Or it could be the opposite. Like, maybe this is a nobles thing, and if they're nobles, then you know in your head the world... In this specific case, the way the world works is nobles are in constant competition. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So logically, if there's any opportunity that some of the nobles might be put in a less than ideal light, of course everybody's gonna blow that up to extreme proportions because they're in competition so in that case maybe they're really afraid and it happens and so now you've just by knowing how the world works just by knowing okay nobles and they'd probably be in competition with it with each other suddenly the player's idea of blackmailing them works and you could you can just you can make that work and that is the easiest way of avoiding railroading, just by knowing vaguely how the world works, and then logically making the world react in a way that makes sense, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how much sense I'm making. No, I, I, do, I, do, get, I do get what you mean. Yeah, I do, I do, I do definitely, definitely get what you mean. It, it, it's all something that I will, you know, that I will try and keep in mind because something that I am quite big on um, is I want to make the world feel like it is 
I suppose, real. Like, like whatever I do, I really don't want to make it feel like I like like this is a this is a this is a world that has been made just for the players to play it. Mm-hmm. If you get what I mean. Sounds great. And that is something that I am going to try and really do. Um, but yeah, again, thank you so much for the you know for the advice and you know, for everything. Um, I'm gonna get a thumbnail, and then I'm gonna read chat. I don't, again, I don't mind reading if you want to look for a thumbnail while you're doing it. Okay. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> Kango, uh, he says, "Wow, this is really fascinating to listen to." Yes, you're really getting a look into the inside of both our minds here. <laughs> um, he also says another thing you can do with that is just is just to move whatever you want your players to meet slash come across to where they're going rather than leaving it where it is. But that's also not always the best idea because then the players think they have a free will but were really always meant to meet that innkeeper's friend talking about how he, she managed to defeat that vicious tiger with nothing but her wits and her shuffle. Good God. <laughs> um, can go... Uh, he says, also, thanks for the compliment about the first picture I posted, Mr. W. The home of Fabian the Frog, player character, wasn't really meant to look creepy, but rather just like a frog sound. Uh, but yeah, I can see how it looks creepy. On the, se- <coughs> On the second linked picture, you can see the house's insides, which, fun fact, is actually a little, little bit bigger than the outside model, which I could easily do because the outside and the insides are two separate scenes. So if you went in through the doorway of the outside model, there would be oh, blimey, a circle wipe transition thing closing. It would load the Fabian house inside scene where the opening transition would play, linking them together. Visible in the last two links I've posted are also NPCs, one in each, which you can already talk to, but there's not oh hello. But there's not really there you go, but there's not really any quests or game mechanics established le- yet, apart from the apart from player and camera movement. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, Kanga Fango, and Mr. W as well, of course. Yes. The thing about moving content to the players, mm. independent of what they're doing, that is a tricky subject. Yeah, because I guess it can Be- feel like... Um, I guess it can feel artificial, in a way. Like, if it doesn't yeah. feel like it fits in with the world. Now... Okay, I'm going to try to say this as concisely as I can, oh, boy. which is a good thing, probably. Yeah, but we know it's not going to go well. Eh, who knows? We'll see. I mean, one I of these know. years, I'm going to get better at it. <laughs> so, depending on the situation and what's at stake, I'm not opposed to doing that. For example, if if you've had this multiple session arc of the players following breadcrumbs and this mystery and it's building up and, oh, and what is this thing? And, oh, we're finding out more and more and the players are into it and all this happening and the players decide to go the exactly wrong way right at the end. And there would be no in-universe way for the players to conclude that journey that they've been on, then, uh, yes, I would, if it's possible, I would take, if there's no better way of doing it, mind you, I would take that finish to that story and just move it to where the players are going, because the players don't know what I had planned originally, and them having a satisfying conclusion to that story is more important and more fun than just losing the thread completely and that's just going to be disappointing. So in cases like that, yes, I would consider doing this. But what you said is definitely true. If you do it for convenience, then, yeah, it does feel cheap. Because it's basically a lie. You're making it feel like 
Oh, the players have choice, and what they do matters, and it, there are consequences. But actually, you know secretly that no, it doesn't matter. And even if the players never figure it out, for me at least, to me, that would cheapen the experience. It would make it less fun. Especially because of my point three about that, which is that it it's basically an easy way out. And the dangerous thing with that, well, the risky thing with that is that once you start using it, you're going to be tempted to use it more and more. And then, like, okay, well, that time I moved the thing over. And I did that again two sessions ago. So, I mean, the players are now going in the wrong way. And it would be a whole... It, it could be, like, episodes before they get to the thing that I wanted them to get to. Or sessions that I want to, for them to get to the thing I want to get to. So I'll just move it to where they are. You can see what I mean, that it can get, it become, it can become a crutch that you lean on to stop, and that can stop you from growing as a, as a game master. Mm -hmm. So in certain cases, I would say, yes, it's good. It's okay to do, I would do it. But in most cases, I wouldn't. Yeah, you have to be very careful with where you do it and when you do it, I imagine. Mm-hmm. Tango says, yeah, I get what you mean. And also, mm, and yeah. Oh, and again, um, but what, <laughs> oh, Kango says, but what if that crutch breaks and you fall down? That is when, that is when the lies get revealed to everyone. Yes, I mean, I think a crutch breaking and you falling down is bad in any case. Um, but yeah, that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because if you do do that regularly, then you're, you have to keep up the pretense of yeah. it being genuine. Yeah, you have to keep up. You've got to keep it up. And then if and when it does get revealed, like for example, if you keep doing it, and then one time, because you've also got to be careful of continuity, because... Yeah. If you move it somewhere else where the players are going and then one player, for example, a player that takes notes, <laughs> uh, realizes, wait, didn't that NPC say that the castle was to the east? And didn't the army that ransacked this town also come from the east? So then why is this castle now to the north? And then, yeah. then you're in trouble, because then you've got to, on the spot, make up continuity to fill in the gaps that were left by your <laughs> easy way out fixing of issues. Yeah. I guess if it's, if it's a situation like that, you want to somehow, um, if it is like a main story plot point, and they've gone completely the opposite way, I suppose you want to, you don't want to just like plot the main story plot point in a different place if it feels if it feels out of place. I guess you want to somehow sort of lead them back around into that plot point. Yeah, but the danger, of course, with leading them is that it can again feel like a railroad. Yeah. <laughs> so, I guess it's I guess it's trying to make sure that ev that every or, the, or at least most most actions most meaningful like most of the meaningful actions they take somehow some way leads back to you know what you're trying to yeah and i think that that is the main reason why the other gm that you that we discussed this with said about having multiple ways of accomplishing the same thing yeah. Which is that if the players turn left too many times when they should have turned right, mm. you've still already got something in place that can get them, that can point them towards the 
path that you had intended if they just missed yeah. the other things so that you don't have to come up with things to guide them back onto that way on the fly so yeah but the more the more you know the setting and the more you know how the world works the easier it's going to be to have things happen on the fly like for example with the what i said previously with the castle and the army being in the east and the players go north well if i know how the world works to some degree like maybe okay there's this army stationed at this castle and they're raiding the area fine well do the players know where the army currently is no okay then the army just happens to be to the north and the players overhear us or find a scout of the army and the scout then maybe if they interrogate the scout points them in the direction of the castle that's a natural way of re of putting the players back on that way on the path and if i know how the world works like for example that there is an army then that's a thing that you can just come up on the fly with at least if you've got enough ex if you've I almost said if you have enough experience, but no, I don't mean if you have enough experience. I mean if you have quick wits. If you're no, if if you're relaxed enough, I would say, because mm -hmm. if you're stressing up out about it, like no, oh no, the players are going the wrong way. What do I do? What do I do? Uh, sure, get them. They they find a sign that says castle this way. Yeah, <laughs> you see. You see what I mean? That, <clears throat> but if you're thinking, if you're relaxed about it, and even if you don't can't come up with anything on the f on the moment, you can just say, at least if it's not live, if it's not live, you can say, "All right, I've got to prepare some stuff. I'm gonna need like ten minutes. Please talk amongst yourselves while I figure this thing out." Yeah, and if they're good, play and if they're good, if they're good players and just good people, they will. Allowed. Yeah, and especially with a new GM. I know that our Saturday group would be more than happy with that. So, and then you can take a step back and think it through, think about what different pieces you've got on the chessboard, so to say, or, or rather just on the map, what pieces you have got on the map, and knowing how the world works, thinking about, okay, which of these pieces could reasonably be found by the players to point them in the direction they're supposed to go. And if everything fails, well, then it's time for a new plot. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, all, yeah, all of this, all of this talking about this, I, I mean, I'm, I am enjoying it, obviously, but, and I hope that it's helpful. It but is, it, yeah. I think the most helpful thing is just try it. Maybe have a session zero. Because yeah. ha have you heard the term, the, the, the idea behind a session zero yet? Do you know, do you know about that? I think so, yeah. Like, it, like particularly with fate, um, something that is advised that you do is sit down with your players and basically just throw ideas out for the setting. And the plot, like that. Well, that is... Uh, that I would say that that should be done before session zero. Uh -huh. So, at least my definition of session zero is, okay, you know what the setting is, you've made your characters, now let's have a trial run. Basically, yeah, like a, a, a trial run. So you say, okay, you have these characters, and this is the setting. And we'll have a session. At the end of the session, I can sit back, review, okay, these things worked, maybe these things didn't work, ask the players for feedback, and then if it worked well, when, in, when proper session one rolls around, you can just continue from there. Or maybe if you need to change some things, then good, you've, you've got that in the trial run, and now you've got a proper session one to start with, and you can just start from the beginning with a new story. You can keep the same characters, you can have new characters, whatever you want. 
but that's more the a trial run is how I would put it as session zero. Mm -hmm. At least that's my definition of it. P other people's definitions of it might vary. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I'll read chat. Again, you sure you don't want me to do it? No, no, it's fine. I'm the stream's almost over anyway. I've finished building. I'm just talking with you, <laughs> having a conversation. One more quick thing before you do. Uh huh. I think another thing that is sort of got me less confident than I than I normally would is that I don't know the f I, is that I don't know the fate rules as well as I'd like to. I mean, I have read the book. But I'm not as confident with the fate rules as I, you know, as I would have liked, as I would have liked to be. And some of the fate rules I do, I do sort of disagree with and think, and sometimes think they are a bit, like, more complicated than, than they could have been, for a system that is based on that, that that doesn't have a setting as such and is rather just a set of rules. So, I have two bits of advice for that. One is if you're a new GM, especially one who's not that familiar with the system, don't mess with it. Because there are reasons for those rules being in place the way that they are, that are often not clear. Sometimes it might seem like something doesn't make that much sense. And if you look at it on its own, it doesn't, but it's interconnected and interacts with this other system in this way, and that interacts with that other system. And so, I wouldn't mess with it. No, I don't plan to. <laughs> Good. The second bit is, if you have players in your group who are all who've already played the system, who know how the system works, and if it's a supportive group, which the Saturday one is, which it is, yeah, then don't worry about it. As long as you know the yeah. absolute basics in the case of fate, how uh, skill checks work. I would say, and how stunts work. Well, how not stunts, I mean how aspects work. Then I would say that's it. And if you run into something, like for example, combat, and you're saying, okay, we enter combat, and all right, players, I'm not sure how this runs. Could you help let me out with the rules? The let me just get the cheat sheet up, and let me have or, or no, 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 not even that, just saying, all right, we're going into combat. Could you help me out with the rules, please? Then, in a supportive group, players will say, okay, sure, this is how it works. Step one, you do this, then you do that, then you do that. And then that'll work. Don't worry about the rules. The rules are the thing that supports the game and that functionally makes it work. But they're not necessary. You can play a game, and I have actually played a game without any rules, where it's just you make something up, and if it makes sense, then it happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So don't let that hamper you. Don't be afraid of the rules, especially when there are players there who already know how the game works. Yeah, and I guess we are incredibly lucky to have a fake veteran. Mm -hmm. um, incredible. Although, if we didn't, I'm not sure that you would have chosen Fate as the game to play. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I probably would have done just normal D&D. &D. Probably not Pathfinder, but I probably would have, just, would have done, like, 5th edition. Mm. Oh, also, which I... Actually, which, which I actually have a, have a group of at, um, at the place I'm currently going to. They've actually a D&D &D group up there. Nice. I also have another system that could be very useful. It's based on... It's a very cleaned up, more, very easy to understand version is of... It S is it oh. STA by any chance? <laughs> no. No, no, no. This is easier than STA. It is called Swords and Wizardry, and it's a rewrite of original D&D. Before there were so many things that bloated it and that... Anyway. So it's okay. simple rules that cover most of what you're going to run into. And it's the sort of thing that, if you've got the time, you can read it in an afternoon, just flip through the basic rules, read it, and play in the evening. It's quite Ooh, simple. Okay. Yeah, if you could send me like the PDF of that on, um, on Discord or my email or something. Yeah, I'll see if I can have a read through that. 
yeah, I'll see about it. Thank you. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I'll reach out. <laughs> and we got to um, Kango. 23, yeah. 23. 23. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The hypothetical crutch. But yeah, I've barely ever GM'd and I've not had to do that yet. Regard referring to moving stuff to where the players are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've not done that yet. But yeah, the player I've had... Wait, what? But yeah, the player I've had never really... Oh, the players I have had I say. <laughs> have never really drifted off the story, aka regrettably narrow path, I had in mind. But yeah, having a narrow path when you first start, I think, is completely natural. Mm. Um, at least for me. For me it was. And then I naturally found out what worked for me, what didn't, and altered my GMing style to fit that, which happens naturally. If the players keep turning left when they're meant to turn right, you could also have the fake floor drop down and let the whole party, given that they're all more or less together, fall down into a chute that leads into a minecart and let that literally railer the players to the correct way to go. Upon arriving at the destination, the entrance that the players were supposed to come through is just blocked off by boulders, with a sign saying, haha, out of order. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're going to do that, then does it really matter if the players are together? What if there are just shoots were, uh, underneath all of them, and they all happen to lead to the same minecart? Yeah. I mean, at that point, does it really matter? They spawn into existence and immediately fall down the chute. <laughs> Yeah, that's more something for session number one. Yeah, that sounds g good. Minus good. one. Oh yeah, session negative one. For <laughs> yes, exactly. So session negative one is describing the settings, making characters, and then session zero is a dry run, which incidentally is not only good for a, from a GM's point of view because it gives you a chance to GM the campaign in the setting without having to worry about continuity or messing things up. But also for the players, because it gives the players to have a chance at playing the character and seeing if the way that they imagined the character would be played is actually how they're going to play it. A player might say, after the dry run, after session zero, eh, my, I think... I think I'm going to play a bard this time, actually. Yeah, that whole warrior thing didn't work out for me. Okay, I'll make a bard. For example. Or it could be something much smaller than that, like in Star Trek Adventures, switching out a value or a talent. Yes. Um, right. Mr. W, didn't you want to shout something out as well before? Yeah, we can do that right at the end. Yeah, I'll do it at the end. If people, if, if, if people on YouTube can actually get to this. <laughs> Just to get to that point. And yeah, I've not yet had... Any combat in the games I've GM'd yet. Mm -hmm. And combat in Fate is quite simple. In STA, however, it is really quite complicated. In D&D, the basics of it is simple. But it depends on which, sy which system you use. Uh, would have probs slowed them down quite a lot because mine were pretty much all just one shots or two shots. Mm. Yeah, players. I've had it. Yeah, perhaps that. Perhaps that may be so. But I had a lot written out. Even some key points of the dialogue of these scientists beneath London, who had managed to send a double decker bus with a robot and a bunch of tech stuff into the future, which the users. Hive B found, had found, and where the robot had called the bus back to their time. Would do it a lot differently now. <laughs> it sounds like a plot of a kids' TV show episode. Yeah, to me it sounds more like a Doctor Who plot. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know, I wasn't, I wasn't a player in that, so I don't know how the, what do you exactly mean by had some key points of the, the, the dialogue written out. I think it's like, uh, it's, it's like what I asked about. Should I write out a script of what the characters say, or should I put bullet points? Yeah. So, yeah. 
Oh, that that reminds me. Yes, one thing that I regarding what you said previously about that. Um. How? Ha yeah, having a, a knowledge of the, how the world works with the. Let's go back to the nobles who the players are trying to blackmail for the item. I. If, okay, let's just say, at the end of the session, the players f make the plan, okay, we're gonna blackmail the nobles, because that always ends well, doesn't it? Yes. Then, you say you've got two weeks to prepare. I would say, figure out... Vague, I would say figure out vague points of how the confrontation could go. Like, for example, mm -hmm. if the nobles... Again, okay, the no, if it's like a competition thing between the nobles, like they, they're in competition with each other, and they're trying to uh, make the others look bad and make themselves look good and things like that, then that alone is such a huge point to inform how they're gonna be role-played. So, for example, okay, there's this is confrontation, and the players come up and say, uh, well, you could keep that item for yourself, but if you give it to us, then your reputation will stay intact. How about that? So then, the noble, knowing about that whole thing, that the reputation is important, you will know how they're gonna act. They can say, Something like uh, they they can tr they can try to bluff maybe maybe they're so terrified that they're trying to bluff it, or maybe they maybe they cave immediately, <laughs> um, which would actually work with the whole cowardice thing. Thinking about it, anyway. But if you try to write it out, what they're gonna say, then I don't think that's gonna work. And then if you've got it prepared. And you're, again, a crutch. Like, if you've got it prepared, you're leaning out, you know, okay, I've got this written out, I'm fine. And the players do something else, which means you can't use that anymore. Then suddenly a support that you thought you had isn't there anymore. And then improvising it is going to be a lot more stressful than if you were just going to improvise it anyway. If you get what I mean. Mm, yeah, yeah, I get it. But again, this is all theory. This is all just, well, some of it is practice because of experience, but this is basically all theory. You can talk theory for as much as you want, but eventually the time is going to come where it's just, it's just take a deep breath and go for it. Just go for it and do it. And I'm almost certain that it's going to be a positive experience hmm. oh, yeah. because I know the group and that's going to give you so much more so much more what's the word I'm looking for confidence well confidence yeah but the other word uh, it means you want to do something can't think of the word I can, uh, hmm. strange motivation motivation yes that's the one um, yeah, that's going to give you so much more motivation. Uh, oh, and now there's chat to read again. How interesting. Yes. <laughs> um, I want to go to bed. You can in a moment. Let me just read chat and then you can do your shout out and then... Um... Yeah, but yeah, I've definitely learned from it. Ah, ha, ha, yes, yeah, a lot of what the scientists said I had written out. But yeah, despite doing it in the past, and it did work fairly well in the end, I wouldn't recommend it. Maybe move the camera a little bit downward so that the tree on the right foreground sticks out above the tree line in the background. I already took several images for the thumbnail. That last set, um, setting was just a beautiful picture for as a background for us having a chat. I suppose I suppose that I, su I suppose it's that time again, eh? The time where I've got to pull all my worries aside, put all my worries aside, and just start, just start my campaign. 
Ah, uh, that wasn't me talking. <laughs> ah, alright. Anyway. It's taken a lot longer than I'd expected. Yes, sorry to keep you up. Hell. I'm sorry to keep you up this long. No, don't worry, don't worry. I mean, I've got to be up, uh, as I said, 11.30. Um, and I'll, I'll probably get up uh, at 9 or so. So I should have enough time, but yeah. Okay. You know, the reason why this happened is because this is catch-up for all the time that you haven't been in voice chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming. It's been a pleasure it's having you again. If you want to do your shout-out, now's the time. I will do indeed, uh, but uh, last, uh, Kango just has this last bit. So thank you both so much for this brilliant live stream. It's been great having you in the VC again, SW, and I wish you all a good night. Bless you. Uh, Kango also says, cat's up, where's the mustard? Uh, Kango says, all right, go ahead. Yes, I will do. I have got, on Discord, I have got a, like a text-based roleplay server, so not like a tabletop thing, it was uh, something that's purely text-based. Um, if you want, uh, if you want, if you want, if you want to join, I will try and remember to put it in. Uh, do you have like a self promotion channel? In um, yourself? I've got promotions of great stuff. That, that'll that'll do. Um, and if I forget it, then and if I forget it, and you're interested, uh, just DM me, and I will I will send you the link to that. Good. Right. I, I, I do indeed. Ah, you meant Shardice. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so yes, thank you very much. The stream will be archived. Minus a little bit in the middle that will be cut out. And good night. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Let's just wait for it to catch up for Kango. I think he's... Yeah, this is... will be there in a moment. Or has he maybe already gone? Maybe he's already gone. Anyway, bye-bye.